Recording in progress. Hello. 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 Sir, good morning. Good morning, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. We are able to hear you, sir. Okay. Are you getting... Have people come there? Not full audience, sir, but yes, they are on the way. So, let me know when to start. We are ready here. Yes, sir. So, people are demanding to start right now only. And other doctors are also on the way. Okay, fine. So, Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Pleasure to have you once again. And I hope you had a good sleep. Good morning, Satish Ji. Good morning, boss. See this. This is a known case of AFRS. This yes. child recently presented with visual loss. Oh, right. See this. If yes. I show you the CT scan first, let me show you the CT scan first. Classic findings of allergic fungal rhinosinusitis. Yes. See, this patient left frontal sinus blocked. See this cheap, significant debited needle septum. As we go behind, see this disease causing bone erosion of the medial wall of the orbit, upper part of the septum, and the roof of the ethmoid. See the roof of the post ethmoid. Can you see? Hello? Is it visible? Am I audible there? Hello? Yes, yes. Yeah. Perfectly all right. Yeah, yeah. So this is eroding the posterior ethmoidal roof because yeah. of the pressure erosion. And if I change the window setting, you can see the distinct appearance of the disease which is pushing the dura up. Now, the okay. soft tissue details, see this heterogeneous density is within. So, that was the postethmoidal cell. See, this is postethmoidal cell. Yes, yes. Now, see carefully, when I go behind, going behind, going behind, see where my cursor is within the cell. This is postethmoidal cell, now continuing in the sphenoid. Sphenoid, yeah. Same heterogeneous density is on the, in the sphenoid as well. And see, this disease is pressing at the orbital apex and lesser wing of sphenoid. Yeah. That is the lesser wing of sphenoid. The bone is completely eroded on this side. Yes. This is the optic now on this side and see the density of the disease along the optic now on this side. Now, if I reconstruct to all planes, you will find much better picture. See this. How the post model roof is eroded. Can you yeah. see? Yes, yes. That is erosion of the post model roof. And see in the axial. That's the optic now. And yeah. how the disease is pushing at the orbital apex. That is, you know, compression at the level of the orbital apex. Can you see? That is the cause. Yes, that's the optic now. And here it is the compression at the level of the optic now. Compression and inflammation both contribute to the, you know, compromise in the vision in these patients. Right. Now, whether it is fungus or not, could be something else. We need more information. So, we have MRI. See the same picture of MRI. The same patient. So, we have to ask for uh, MRI paranasal sinuses with contrast. Yes. 
and see what is this happening. Heterogeneous densities, and if I get a good T two weighted imaging, T two weighted drive imaging, you will see. See this dark appearance of the fungus. Yes, yes, yes. So fungus gives signal loss, and that yes. is what the dark appearance of the fungus. Can you see very clear? Yes. And see the distinct appearance of the dura. Hmm. Pressing upwards. Yes. So it is not invading. Yeah. yeah. That exactly. information is best ascended by MRI. A CT scan cannot give you that kind of information. See this. The fungus gives signal loss. See at the orbital apex on this side. Yeah. All signal loss because of the fungus. See the fungal material. Yeah. And your optic now. And see how this fungus is compressing on it. So that is fungal material. That yeah. is the orbital fat. And this is fungus, and this is separated from the skull base very clearly. Nothing is invading the skull base. You can see in the sagittal MRI as well. See the dura is lifted up because of this mass lesion. Can you see very clear? Yeah, very clear. And there is no invasion of the dural space. So the goal is that's a very interesting situation. I will show on the left side. We have number of cases lined up for today. Some um, more draft cases, lotrops and drafts. So our goal on this side, I will be operating. The significant finding is on the left. So I will demonstrate on the left. First of all, I may have to do a, a septal correction. See this. See the turbinate. Yes. Then disease. That is the region of the posterior thyroid yes. and the sphenoid. Maxillary is good. Even the frontal sinus on this side is pretty good. Drainage pathway is good. So, this is uh, to begin this important day. This case of allergic fungal rhinosinusitis giving visual loss. Is our first case. Okay. Anything more you want to see on the imaging? Satish ji. Yes, please. Yes, boss. Yes, boss. Hello. Yes, boss. Ha, sir. Uh, the uh, sagittal section of MRI, which is showing on the right side, shows that there is a air strip between the fungal mass and the dura. So, can we consider it that the bone is still intact of the skull base? No, no, no. See, the bone at the skull base appear dark. Bone in the MRI, bone in any MRI will appear dark. Yes, sir. Fat the in any MRI will appear bright. Yes, sir. Fat everywhere will appear bright. See the fat in the orbit everywhere. Bone everywhere will appear dark. S sir, on the sagittal section, the blackest strip is there yeah, between the mass dura. and the dura. dura so, only. so uh, am I? Uh, I am asking that the huh, that part means the bone is, is still intact. Otherwise, the fungal mass would had been touching the dura. See, this is fungal mass is lifting up the dura. Fungus mass is lifting the dura. Yes, sir. The bone is eroded. That's why dura is lifted up. And what is this? Uh, this this blackish strip. 
is dura. What you are seeing is the dura. Yes, sir. Inside the dura, this white is, is the CSF space. And yes. because the dura is lifted off, this CSF space is obliterated here. There is no bright appearance of the CSF within the dural space. See, wherever the dura on the opposite side, see, wherever the dura is the CSF space inside. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and here, because the dura is lifted off, the CSF space is obliterated. Yes, sir. So that's an interesting situation. The fungal mass pressing at the orbital apex. And we are starting in a couple of minutes. You can please continue your questions, discussion from yesterday's session. Anybody has any doubts or comments? Please. Uh, Dr. Satish? Yes, please. Uh, yesterday, we saw three cases with the uh, kind of uh, varying approaches to the frontal sinus. Yeah. Right. Today also, you will see. Uh, yeah. So, my question, and uh, I believe that it's going to be a question for everybody, is that when you are looking at a patient with frontal sinus disease, oh. how do you decide that this is going to be the best approach to... Yeah. So, what is the, your intuitive thinking? Look, I'm going to do a draft. I'm going to do a, a kind of a frontal uh, recess approach in this. How do you decide that? Yeah. So there are lots of factors need to be taken into consideration. Yeah, you had here. Oh, pata hai lose connection hai, bhi. Hello? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, a lot of factors need to be taken into consideration for that. First are the clinical indications, the disease profile. I told you that certain diseases have significant inflammatory profile, which requires more extensive approaches looking at the future prospects. Secondly, the anatomical situation and the history of previous surgery and other factors. Anatomy, the most important determinant is the three-dimensional radiology. Radiology will tell you that how much is the difficulty you are going to encounter and how much the space, the aeration you are going to give in the future. That dictates the need of an extensive approach or not. Third is the in patients having who have undergone repeated surgeries, this is very important in the frontal sinus because scarring in the frontal sinus is very, very challenging. Like in the previous case, yesterday's case, yes. the first case where we did draft was a revision case, such a bad scarring, not even you know possible to identify the landmarks in that situation. And those are the cases where significant inflammatory profile, revision, surgery, anatomy distorted, and you can't take a chance of, you know, future surgeries by again giving a regular narrow approaches. So those are classical indications for extensive approaches. And in frontal sinus, that's the only sinus which gives you opportunity to remove the floor completely to drain in the nasal cavity. Okay. So, we should not think twice in those situations because as far as the recurrences, difficulties, you know, recalcitrant disease, all these are concerned, it is almost always the frontal sinus which is responsible for most of the problems. Okay. See now, what we saw on radiology. Radiology warns you what all Additional procedures may be required. I told you from the CT scan that this patient has a significant septal deviation. Yes. Did you notice? Yes. Significant septal deviation, terminate deviation. Such patient requires septoterminoplasty. And you can tell your patient well in advance that these additional procedures will be required in this situation. 
think there is hardly any space. After the decongestion, we could able to see all this. See that? So I will do a sort of limited septoplasty in this case. Yesterday, I could avoid by mobilization, fracturing a part of the septum and the spur without doing the septoplasty. We did some turbinoplasty, we resected a part of the turbinate. So, septum and turbinate procedure are almost always required very frequently to optimize the results of the sinus surgery because they can contribute to a big, as a big cause of failure if left untreated because post-operatively our goal of the sinus surgery to provide a cavity where the topicals can be introduced efficiently. See the opposite side, see the fungal material, polyp. See, this is a revision case. Now imagine if you enumerate what could have been the causes for the revision cases in this particular case. See this. Such a significant septal deviation was not treated earlier. Do you see? Hello? Yes. Such a significant septal deviation was not treated earlier. Right, right. Right. So, first of all, I'll do a limited septoplasty in this case. Yeah. Simplest manner I will show you. I have not injected anything on the septum, you can see. Yes. I told you we never inject anything in the nose for anything. Just topical application. Okay. See? Right. Getting into the correct plane. Lenation endoscopy mouse is correct and under vision way. Endoscope my tears, how many should tell a good watch? I take over for a third of the tears. See the picture. This is the significant deflection. Yes, yes. Spur. Which is responsible for this kind of deviation. Now, this may not be contributing to the needle obstruction. Yeah, no? yeah. So, so it will be better for post-operative care and follow-up. Yes. So, this septoplasty is indicated for other reasons. Yes. Cartilage is, detached. Is Cartilage is detached from the bony septal part. Yes. Yeah. That's the bony cartilage junction. True. And this is the spur. Yes, yes, yes. See, that's the bony spur which was responsible. Yeah, it was almost touching to the lateral wall. Yes. See, I am removing only deflected portion. Yeah. Here my goal 
is to improve access for the surgery yeah as well as post operative irrigation yes good mm -hmm. No. Is this part of the cartilage? Uh, scoring. Yeah. So it will break the memories. Spring action. Yes, yes, yes. Memories or you can remove a part of it also. Yeah. 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 Which is creating problem. I don't want to remove too much of the cartilage. Uh, unnecessarily. See, there are many ways to do the same thing. Mm, right. We are doing for the access yes. and the irrigation. Now, good exposure after septal correction. Yeah, yeah. We have good exposure now. Yes, yes. I can improve a little bit further. Hello. Yes, please. Ha, sir, uh, many times in our practice, we feel that septoplasty is possible, can be done at the last procedure because uh, after creating the flaps, it comes in during the suctioning and during the debriding the I material. Will, I will. <laughs> See, I will tell you the trick how to avoid that. Yeah, like that. I will tell you the trick which will not allow this to fall in your field. Okay? Yes. Yes, sir. See now, we don't need any more correction. Yes, sir. Preserve the septum. Integrity. See the condition of the turbinate because of this. Yes, it becomes very thin. Flappy, yeah. thin. Since we are going to do a very extensive procedure in this, I yeah. don't want to keep this and do a partial resection without any problem. See this? Yeah. So yeah. there are many ways to deal with a floppy turbinate. See this? Yes. Let me tell you a trick of micro fracturing. Let me show you all the tricks on this. Number one, micro fracturing. See this here. This turbinate at the junction with the ground lamella. Yeah. See this? Yes, yes. Gently micro fracturing at this junction breaks this and keeps the turbinate medially here. See now? Yeah. See this? Yes. 
lies all the time immediately it will never fall number 1 so it will keep septum yes. always away from you yeah but in this case i am removing because yeah. i have to do lot of extensive work in this yeah. and this this is certainly uh something not very very important for that now for the person yeah you ask me that your flap comes all the way in between see my where my instrument i am parking yes sir your instrument is pushing septum away not pushing my right. telescope is parked <laughs> beyond the incision yes yes so it is not in the way see this was the incision yeah earlier the septal incision okay yes yeah. sir park your instrument beyond that see that yes yeah, sir yes yeah. now nothing will come in the way right simple solution now see the space yes sir earlier it was not even possible to introduce Which? your scope yeah now we can see the even spinoid ostium also yeah yeah everything is clear now you know but the turbinate became floppy paradoxical just because of the septal constant septal push now this is what your uncinate yeah yes sir <clears throat> This is what your uncinate mobile structure. Yes, sir. Anterior to that is prominence of the major lacrimal duct. Lacrimal duct. Uncinate. Duct. This is hypo uh, hypoplastic bulla. You can say. Yeah. This is ground lamella. Okay. See how it is distorted. This is your infundibulum. Yes. Yes. Into which the ostium is opening. Right. See this. Yes. Back biting, back biting, three branch until hard bone. Yes, see the ostium there. Yes. So this is all little distorted. Posterior Post front anali, yeah. Yeah. According to the experience, how you are used to, you can change your technique. the goal is going to be same yes A lot of people talking about osteolysinosis and all that that was passed now with the popularity of irrigations you know yeah the chances of stenosis are less and less see the upper part of the uncinate yeah i am taking away with the debrider only yeah 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 going behind it and reaching see the maxillary sinus yes it was, it was good we could see on ct scan that was not our area of interest yes now see the the moment you remove the upper part of the uncinate you are closest to the orbit let me yeah lamina papyrus yeah, very lamina here yes yes okay okay i had shown you yesterday uh, the other techniques of frontal sinus true intact bulla yesterday yeah now see what i am showing you another way of approaching the frontal yeah see i am opening the axilla thoroughly mm right keep on opening the axilla thoroughly you have your lateral limit in view See only one instrument working, red yeah. forty. This is one of the best debrider blades, most useful debrider blades, I would say. What is this? What I have opened? Anybody? Prize. Pardon, supra bowler. No, come on. Agar agar cells. Yes. Always think of common thing first. See this. This is now see orient the maxillary sinus. Yeah. Bulla. Bulla. That's the uh, orbit medial wall. Yes. This is 
your middle terminate here yeah this is where the ancinate was going up and joining this agar wall medial wall of the agar yeah this now take it a 70 to reach in frontal in no time says here yeah. there has been a traditional technique i told you to show different different approaches to frontal till the here in this case the frontal is not a problem so i can demonstrate this simpler way what is this frontal recess we open the aganeji yeah now see जेक्यूरेट में दूर आई दिस द मीडियल वॉल ऑफ द आगर इट ज्वाइन द अनसिनेट प्रोसेस दिस वन आई एम गोइंग बिहाइंड इट सी दिस केयरफुली यस 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 between the middle tabinet and the agar yes can you see this yeah yeah fracture this medial wall to enter into the see this frontal sinus yeah He my guide, my medial limit is turbinate. Turbinate. in any given such situation i am not supposed to cross the this mucosa is not looking good can you see this yes yes so oh, could be something invasive fungus aspergillosis see the beak above yes Yeah, yeah, seventy degree beauty of that's the beauty of seventy degrees. Oh, this could be invasive. I would doubt this could be invasive fungus also. Mm. Invasive means aspergillosis. You know, when it comes to aspergillosis, mm. the treatment drastically changes. I'll change to seven zero degree. So antifungal treatment is totally. Yes. Yeah, then voriconazole is the answer, not the surgery. Yes, yes, yes. Have to confirm that voriconazole. And, wonder- and it works wonderfully. Yes, wonderfully. But why you are suspecting it is invasive, sir? And the mucosa was looking invaded. Not sure. Let me confirm. I'm back with zero degree. Okay. So I. Aspergillosis is the aspergillosis is the classic. You know. And Satish, uh, vision loss is uh, definitely an indication for uh, eroding disease. No, no, vision loss in the AFRS is not uncommon. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. Optic now in the vicinity, any inflammation can give rise to vision loss. Okay. See, see that is the lesion. This yellowish appearance. See this. Hmm. With inseparability from the mucosa, it's an invasive one. See this. Hello. Yes, yes. And if it is invasive, what is going to be the answer? You have to confirm on histopathology. Ah, uh, we will take a frozen section. We have round the clock frozen section availability. Uh, availability is here.
seen AFRS, what you see is the material which is, see this, mm. material which is fungus and CG. Can you see this kind of material? Yes, yes, sir. yes. This is all invasive. Can you see? Right, yes, sir. This is 100% aspergillosis. Okay. Yes, sir. This is so, invasive. So you are sending this material for frozen? Yeah, yeah. Immediately for frozen dissolved in this. If it turns out to be aspergillosis, you don't need to do anything. Just voriconazole. Whatever the bulk of the lesion is, is going to go away with voriconazole. But it therefore. No. Sir, even if it comes out to be aspergillosis, uh, we have to clear the sinuses out of the uh, of the diseases. Yeah. yeah, then the role of surgery would yes. be to clear the sinuses to maintain, establish the ventilation and drainage. Yes, sir. The, there is no aim of radical removal. Yes, sir. Because that is a medical disease, sir. And now the role of surgery is just to confirm the diagnosis. Okay. Number two, if there are any necrotic region where the drug penetrability is a question mark, you can remove that. I had a doubt when I saw the mucosa in the frontal recess, no? Yes, sir. That's invasive. I can smell this invasive fungus so easily the moment I see. See the sphenoid sinus? Yes, sir. Just establish the ventilation and drainage. See, this mucosa was giving me suspicion. Sir, can allergic fungal sinusitis with invasive sinusitis coexist? Yeah, you see the live example in front of you. Because the opposite side is a allergic fungal sinusitis. Yes, sir. The proven case of allergic fungal sinusitis. Yes, sir. In the post-surgery doses, do we give budesonide doses in these patients if it comes out to be invasive? In spite of invasive fungus, we will give. See the surface. The granular surface, the mucosa is invaded. Can you see very clear? Yes. I read the level of the skull base. And in this particular situation, you are never supposed to be radical in your surgery. For surgery has hardly any role in extending cure to such patients, you know. Surgery has a role in confirming the diagnosis. Surgery has a role in establishing ventilation drainage. Surgery has a role if there are any necrotic areas, necrotic abscesses or anything formed within the large lesions. See, see my entire lab ethmoidal labyrinth is open now. Yes. Coming from spinoid. Opposite side, yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, this is the ethmoidal roof. This is the orbital surface. You can't be aggressive, otherwise you'll end up in complication. Right. 
वी अचीव अवर गोल कहा पूरा बोल That's the end of the surgery in this case. Okay. See this, my ethmoidal roof. See the sphenoid sinus behind. Yeah. See the ethmoidal roof. See the frontal sinus above. Yes. Sir, can you orient about the sphenoid sinus again? Sphenoid is here. See this. That is the sphenoid sinus. This is the skull base. Skull base with the fungus which is invading. Yes, yeah. sir. A roof of it. This is invading. This is the area from here to here. The fungus is invading. This is the area of the orbit which is invaded by the fungus. Yes, sir. And we are not supposed to do anything to it. Sir, in these type of suspected cases, what specifically we have to ask? For reporting of the pathologist, yeah, patho uh, they will find the fungal granuloma. They will find the, you know, narrow high view of the classical of aspergillus on frozen. If a frozen is Any, not only histopath is sent, then मतलब the biopsy part of sent not frozen. Then, then also they will find the high view, aspergillus high view. We know the mucor give broad accepted high view. This is this as per they give narrow branching high peak. Yes, sir. That is classical of uh, as per jealous with some granuloma, fungal granuloma. Yes, sir. So Should that's it, all about this case. Yes, yes. Should we go also for fungal culture? Not really needed. Okay. But critically, if you want to do, you can. Now there are a lot of things to be taken into consideration once you deal with the chronic invasive fungus. We did lot many such cases. First of all, you know, their assessment, prognosis, everything has to be monitored. I change कर देना इधर. हम्म change कर देना. Their prognosis has to be measured. Now, since we have diagnosed this, we'll immediately get the serum galactomannan test done. Galactomannan is a protein which is found in fungal cell wall. All the invasive fungus. Hello. Yes, yes sir. Galactomannan is a protein which is found in aspergillus cell wall. Yes, sir. So we will get the galactomannan done. That will give us an idea of the disease load, confirm the diagnosis as well, because yes. that is classically elevated in aspergillosis. Number two, we'll start voriconazole as a loading dose for three days, 400 milligram twice a day, and yes. then 200 milligram twice a day for the maintenance. Every week you have to get a hepatic function testing done. Yes, sir. Voriconazole affects liver. We have two patients we have seen in our series who went in almost liver failure and somehow uh, recovered. But that is a massive problem in these uh, patients with voriconazole. Every month, if we have long distance patients. We tell them get S G O T P T done every week and keep sending us. So the moment the uh, hepatic titers start rising, you have to change from voriconazole to isavuconazole, which is again in the second line drug for this voriconazole. Uh, for mm -hmm. this invasive fungus aspergillosis, the first line is voriconazole, deadly. It has cured our hundreds and hundreds of patients. It's number one drug. Whatever the fungal mass is, whatever big the fungal invasive fungal mass is, you don't need to remove voriconazole will kill away. So the second line is isavuconazole. Isavuconazole is you know all manufactured by only one company in Switzerland. And uh, that is again a wonder drug. It was wonder drug in mucor mycosis as well as a second line to posaconazole. Yes. Sir. And this is this has a very high safety profile in terms of renal or hepatic or other issues. 
very safe for the liver and kidney both. So second line is isobuconazole. Now the biggest question is till how long we have to continue? There is no deadline. We have continued this for four months, five months, even few of our patients are on the, uh, these drugs for more than a year. Six months. So it depends. It depends upon three factors. Clinical factors, Radiology. the clinical remission, endoscopic, clinical, whatever you have to keep, you know, um, uh, tracking that. Second is the radiological. Keep getting MRI every three months and see the remission. Complete resolution is the end point. And third is the galactomenant, which should come down to minimum. So that, these are the three points. Without these, you cannot stop these drugs. These are expensive drugs. You have to continue. There is no other answer. No role of amphotericin and all those drugs for this aspergillosis. Voriconazole and second line, isovuconazole. Kirsemba. What about the itraconazole, sir? Itraconazole is effective. That has a more toxic profile. When the voriconazole is giving liver issues, the itraconazole is also likely to give. What they belong to the same group. Yes, sir. What is the prognosis of uh, vision loss in this patient? How do we recover? Recover, recover. Okay. Very sir. good prognosis. We have confirmed, even uh, we have opened the sinuses for the ventilation drainage to prevent any secondary infection. And now the moment we start with the loading dose of oriconazole, this will improve. Majority of these patients improve and very fast. So this is classical of invasive fungus. See this, the fungal mass localized to one place, eroded the orbit, went to the orbital apex, eroded the skull base over the post roof, opposite side the same allergic fungal component. Previously, proven case referred to us for allergic fungal disease and still the immunocompromised young patient get developed in veggie fungus. So, uh, you have to be very suspicious, otherwise you get surprised. Was this patient uh, even, immunocompromised? Hmm? This patient was immunocompromised? Not immunocompromised. He's a young, healthy chap. He's working 15 years or so old. No immunocompromise. Even though invasive? Yeah, yeah. Aspergillosis happens in immunocompetent patients only, most of the time. It is mucormycosis which, you know, involve the immunocompromised patients. So, aspergillosis is classically seen in immunocompetent young patients. So, uh, that was a um, uh, uh, great way to begin our day. Very interesting situation. Now, the next case we are taking. Um, yesterday, uh, in the dinner, I have four or five requests from the people to show drafts slowly, slowly, step by step to understand once again. So this case now I have taken. After that, there are two other major, uh, you know, cases of frontal disease, very extensive frontal disease. So this patient is a revision case again. Revision cases. Now see what happened. Previous surgery, see the frontal sinus and there is a scarring you will see in the frontal recess region. See, either don't work at the frontal recess if you are not good, if you are not equipped and if there is minimal disease, just work below the level of the frontal recess and if work, then do a complete job to prevent scarring. Remove all cellularity, preserve all mucosa and give wide opening and then follow with the steroid irrigation for, you know, preventing the fibrosis and neosteogenesis. That is the way to prevent problems. And here, there is scarring and see right side frontal sinus. Complete scarring in the frontal recess region. Complete scarring in the frontal recess region. And this is the frontal sinus on the right side. He has been operated twice. From the history I have seen, opposite side is not bad. Opposite side is okay. Frontal recess is okay. Frontal is not big. 
I'm not giving problem. There's just a polyp coming out of that. On this side is a big issue. And this now, since being operated twice already, with this kind of frontal disease, patient is giving you a third chance. Coming for the third, third time to the surgeon for surgery. You know, when he came to us, he said, I don't want to get operated. You do any, any possible thing, I will follow. But I don't want surgery. This surgery is bad. I have already got done twice and I have no mood to get it done. But he has pain. It is symptomatic. See, what happens? Sinus disease is so tricky. Now, somebody was asking uh, before I started that case, how do you decide to do a draft or no draft in any frontal sinus situation? Look at the situation. Patient has undergone frontal sinus surgery twice. And you see the result. Because of the incomplete job done and the scarring done, he is suffering from this problem. Now, he has come to you. He has un already undergone twice. You can't take a chance for a repeated surgery once again. Oh, blood. You can't take a chance. So now, it is best way to give him a final cure by means of doing a draft and complete removal of the frontal sinus floor. Okay? So this is the ideal indication for a draft in such situation. Ideal indication. Okay, okay, sir. So this I am going to show you step by step, slowly, each and showing each and every anatomy how draft can be you know executed. I believe all you have come can do the draft now with much more confidence. Oh, you get a big. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes. So that's a classical case for the draft. Right, right, sir. Ready? So, any question regarding the previous case or so far? And we welcome Dr. Amit in the theater now. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Now see from the sagittal section. The area where we are going to operate, I'll tell you the thickness of the Yeah. See the thickness of the beak in this situation? Can you see? Yes, 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 sir. And this beak itself is the biggest problem in this case. See this. Once yes. we remove this beak thoroughly, everything will run. Uh, you know, this entire frontal sinus will then write in the nasal cavity. Right. So draft right. is this removal of this floor. Removal of this floor for the frontal to drain. Straight away. Straight away into the nasal cavity. <laughs> Okay. 
So the indication for draft is a recurrent uh, recurrence uh, of disease and uh, anatomical yes. situations. Disease profile number one. Yeah. Revision surgery. Okay. And local condition if there is neoestrogenesis fibrosis. Right. Better to finish off in one go. Secondly. Okay. This is the final answer in all these difficult situations. True. If if I try to open this frontal again, see this condition of the frontal okay. sinus. Yes, yes, yes. See the bone, there is so much of neoosteogenesis. Mm. With this narrow opening, it is likely to, you know, close. Result, yeah, same problem. The reason is, in spite of the best efforts, you will not be able to, you know, deliver the ensure the delivery of the topical steroids deep into the sinus. Our goal is to ensure that the topical reaches depth of the mucosa freely. Now this patient who has already undergone surgery twice, now you can't take a chance. And okay. give a, you know... Best desirable results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can easily give a cure. And see, we are removing this. We are not giving any complication. Yeah. Graph is not associated with any single morbidity. Right. We are working in the safest region. Yes, yes, yes. No important structures is there. Nothing. My skull base is almost more than a centimeter away, behind. Yes, yes. We are working here only. There's nothing important in uh, in this region. We first make sure our limits. See how this surgery is carried out. The first structure we see is the outside skin. Mm. And then follow along the outside skin. Okay. Follow the outside skin, there's nothing. The all around limit is the outside skin. And posteriorly, the skull base, which is almost a centimeter away. And we define that in the beginning by means of First olfactor in your own. First olfactor in your own. That is your posterior limit. You don't have to look at that. Go mm -hmm. there. Right, right. And in between the limits, you can drill away. The only thing, only difficulty it gives is requiring more and more drilling. Yeah. Now with a, such a high speed drilling system available, there is hardly anything. And added on to this, we always use a coarse diamond burr rather than a cutting burr. Okay. Coarse diamond adds on safety to what you are doing in this region. Okay. So, there is no issue in um, as far as the safety is concerned. Ready? So in a couple of minutes, we are starting this next one. डॉक्टर जैन सर डॉक्टर जैन सर यस सर सर मे आई एस लिटिल क्वेश्चन अबाउट रेडियोलॉजी इन दिस डाइकॉम थिंग यस यस प्लीज सजाइटल सेक्शन how do we come to know on a dicom viewer the way you are showing how do we come to know whether this is right side or left side is it written somewhere there simple see this see 
I I have reconstructed. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. See, look at the coronal. I am on the right side. Hello? Yes. Yes, See, this sir. Is, this is right side frontal sinus. Left side. Left yes. side frontal sinus. On coronal, if I take here, this is left side, right side frontal sinus. Yes, sir. You are looking at all the three planes together. There cannot be any confusion. Yes, sir. You are not seeing only one plane at a time. You have an opportunity to see all planes together. Yes, sir. There is no question of confusion. Yes, sir. This has the ability to change to a bony and soft tissue windows anytime. See the beauty of DICOM. Yes, sir. See, this is pure bone window. Yes, sir. See, only bones are prominent. The rest of the background is suppressed. Can you see? Yes, sir. Even the finest bone erosion can be picked up. See the orbital wall. Yes, sir. Thickness of the bone is best appreciated on bone window setting. Yes, sir. Earliest bone erosion can be picked up on bone window setting. Yes, sir. Now I'm and, and see no soft tissue is visible inside. See everything, yes. everything gray. Yes, sir. Now I'm changing to soft tissue window. See this. Yes, sir. See orbit, all the recti muscles. Yes, sir. The globe. See even. Look at the infratemporal fossa muscles. Yes, sir. This is temporalis. Can you see? Yes, sir. See, this is the mandible and the angle, and this is medial pterygoid. Yes, sir. This is the coronoid, and this is this is the lateral pterygoid muscle coming. Yes, sir. This is the mandible outside. This is masseter. Yes, sir. Temporalis is above. Masseter is out. Yes. Sir. Lateral pterygoid up. Medial pterygoid is down. Yes, sir. See all the infratemporal, orbital and infratemporal details of the soft tissues are better appreciated on soft tissues. But see, look at the condition of the bone in soft tissue setting. Yes, sir. It is not actual picture of the bone because it is all distorted. Now this is a soft tissue window where the soft tissue is seen better. Yes, sir. So beauty of the software is you can check this. You can change the window setting in any given condition. And for details of the bone, see now. Yes, sir. This is bone window. If I change to soft tissue window, see this fine appreciation of the laminar bone. Yes, sir. Is lost when you change to soft tissue window. See this. Yes, sir. See the bone cannot be appreciated as good as it was seen on bone window. So that is. The beauty of this software, you can measure any distances, you can measure so many things in 3D. Yes, sir. Black and white, colored vessels, yes, everything sir. can be seen. See the skeleton, 3D skeleton you want to make of this patient? Yes, sir. See the same patient? Yes, sir. See the cribriform plate above. Yes, sir. See, here anteriorly are the frontal sinuses. Yes, sir. And behind the frontal, that is the beginning of the cribriform plate. Yes, sir. And this beginning is the first olfactory neuron. Yes, sir. When we operate, when we operate here, Yes, keep sir. drilling, keep drilling behind till first olfactory neuron. There you are safe. Yes, sir. Keep from the, from the same CT scan what you are getting. This is 3D bone. See all around. Yes. Sir. Any bony discontinuity, bony erosion, fractures, you can see from the same CT scan. You cannot get from the printouts. Yes, sir. 
and you know what happens when you write a ct pns the radiologist will do 5 mm section and give a single print out in 10 seconds with hardly any information in it because it doesn't know what you why you are getting done you yeah. simply written advised ordered ct pns that's it to yes. more details you have to write properly that you want 0.5 mm sections in dicom that's it now in order to do 0.5 mm section he has to do 10 times slices that will cost him it yes. will cost money it will cost time but it will give adequate complete information not a point yes, so sir. the onus is on surgeon to get the radiological details you have to order in the way that you get all the details properly yes sir see the complete skull base from below yes mandible zygoma same ct pns you cannot get all this in print out see the complete beautiful view of the skull base from above if you want to see vessel then there is a different sequence than if you want to do you know in the soft tissue there are many settings which are not relevant to us if you want to do on lung setting if you want to do on abdominal setting if you want to do on you know there are uh, different different ways to see the same thing so dicom is versatile is an amazing software you can make the video any time see the video setting you can easily email the data to anybody see what happens many a times i get the calls from somebody sending a snapshot to me that what to do in a single snapshot you cannot comment i just ask them to email me the data and see this software has a ability just export the image and write the email if you are connected to the net it will come the entire data will be sent it is so easier to send or share the entire data to anybody yes sir or any opinion on anything without doing just single click just export to the email that's it hello 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 sir is there any uh, radiology ent radiology course <laughs> no no <laughs> no no radiology course you have to keep uh, you know practicing keep doing actually no such radiology course but radiology is game changing yes without yeah. the adequate radiological background details the surgeon is blinded with so many informations and you can you, practically you cannot do a no. a complete desired optimized work many a times sir from yes, we, one we, uh, we can see it because there is a dicom viewer in mobile google play store also see that can help us on mobile phone ha ah. Uh, but it doesn't uh, work on the mobile completely. It has to be on laptop or desktop. Sir, many times I have tried. It is it doesn't open in mobile. Yeah, yeah, uh, it doesn't work. Also, in sending the email, we have to zip and unzip. Means we have to compress the images yeah, and so uh, things. It, it will ask. Yes, sir. From the software, like I opened in the laptop. Yes. There, sir. it asks you to zip the file. Yes, sir. Then complete file as an attachment or what? Yes, sir. It asks you the option. Yes, sir. But it goes very quickly. You can take opinion from anybody in a single click. Yes, sir. And DICOM trial version is free. Also, you can again download and without paying. Otherwise, when we work in on Apple, Horos charges so much. It's very costly and not not also so much versatile. Yes, sir. The Apple is uh, yes. So, one question sir 
so many times uh, some other uh, ent doctor has advised ct scan and the patient comes to us uh, with just these films so should we ask the patient to go back uh, and get the cts yes that's a regular problem with me and most of the time patient brings a print out and i am totally blind on print out i can't see so, so you have to ask them to get a, a dicom file or get it done again mostly those print outs are 5 mm sections those yes, are as good as useless yes sir so uh, we should ask the patient either to get it on the cd or, or the pen drive yes so that's why i always propagate this fact that when you order the ct scan order in 0.5 mm sections that's it in dicom the we... file is always saved for you you can easily transfer easily carry and you get complete information you know how many i will show you in the dicom when i come again how many slices we have can't be carried that complete information cannot be carried in print outs we scan almost a 20 cm area 0.5 mm section 20 cm means 400 slices 400 slices then you reconstruct into sagittal and axial 1200 slices 1200 in bone and soft tissue 2400 yet no 3d no uh, video and no uh, uh, you know dynamic imaging so the print outs cannot match you cannot carry a bag of 24 slices yes sir, sir nobody can see that nobody can relate you want to relate axial coronal sagittal at a time always that is not possible on print out so sir this dicom software can it be downloaded is it yes. free yeah initially it is free but you can uh, uh, i think the lifetime charges are somewhere around 5 7000 okay so what is the cost of this cd with dicom dynamic ct the same the cost is same see the difference in ct scan and mri is mri is not reconstructible you know right ct scan is reconstructible for pns ct you don't have to write axial coronal sagittal all that just write 0.5 mm section rest your software will do mri every sequence has a different you know versatility different ability to show giving them different information and every sequence has to be shot separately like t1 weighted you have to shot separately separate axial separate coronal separate sagittal t2 weighted separate axial separate coronal separate sagittal t2 weighted fat suppressed separate axial separate coronal separate sagittal contrast separate axial separate coronal sagittal diffusion separate angio separate so mri has hundreds of sequences you have to shot separately so mri takes time it consumes lot of time as well as money and in mri the onus on the surgeon is too much to get complete information the problem like you said the patient brings print out it is more with the mri and difficult to solve with the mri because ct scan you can easily get the complete information by writing 0.5 mm section in mri you have to write each and every sequence separately each and every sequence separately otherwise what happens you write mri pns now what the radiologist will do he will do one sequence t1 one sequence t2 and give you in 5 minutes the mri which i order takes almost one and half minutes for the patient to undergo complete you know scanning with those number of sequences in all planes and then you get a complete information so regarding mri the onus on the surgeon is highly highly you know important as compared to the ct scan now see the finding in this case just little bit of this polyposis and no other landmark in remission 
I tell you, the landmarks, finding the landmarks is always a challenge. This is two times revision. Now see the first landmark, what I see here. I tell you some important information about the landmarks of revision. There are certain landmarks which are never lost. However, number of revisions have been, been done. This coin is never lost. You know, if you have a coin of oh, one and a half to two centimeters from the you know septum and you reach into the sphenoid osteum. And see here, we already see the sphenoid osteum. Yes, so yes. The sphenoid osteum along the skull base anteriorly, and you can reach to the frontal sinus. Okay, this is one of the landmarks. Yes, yes. So, coin is never lost. Yeah. If you have a coin are roughly go one and a half to two centimeters above, go along the septum and look for the sphenoid osteum. Yeah. Then alone, sphenoid osteum alone is a landmark enough Stop. to take you to all other areas. Yeah, yeah. Number two, inferior terminate. See this, the, the, there is already a septal perforation at multiple places in this patient. Inferior terminate is a great landmark. Even yeah. if you are, the anatomy of the middle meters is distorted, if you find the inferior terminate in the anteroposterior way, in the middle of the course, just slide your instrument, glide your instrument along the inferior terminate laterally to enter into the middle meter entry. So, inferior terminate if there is a great landmark for the middle meter entrosomy. If middle meter entrosomy is present like in this case, is a great landmark because just above in the roof is the orbit. Pressure, orbit. The medial wall of the orbit is the lamina. And following the lamina, you can reach very well to the frontal sinus. Yes, yes. So, that is one of the great Land. landmarks. So, Koina, Phenoid osteum, inferior terminate, middle medial antrosmy, your lamina papricia are great landmarks. And then above them, if you find a lamina, go up and you reach the beak. Beak is the greatest landmark and rarely disturbed unless the draft is done previously. If right. you find the beak, just drill the beak and go into the frontal and then the rest of the landmarks you can discover after you see the frontal sinus going behind. So, in any given situation, beak is a amazing landmark which is never, never lost. See in this case, sir, I had a tough time to convince this patient who had undergone somewhere two surgeries. He was yeah. all adamant that I don't want to get it done again in life. Mm. See sir, now, yes, yes. See the disease. See, the entire thing is disturbed, no landmark. So, yeah, yeah, there was a question. You were asking something? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, in some cases, uh, uh, like uh, atrophic varieties or uh, in accidental cases, there is uh, a loss of uh, middle turbinates and landmarks. So, how uh, we can find out the lacrimal sac in DCR cases? Any constant landmark is there? Weak, weak. No, sir. Uh, lacrimal. Okay. Yeah, yeah. For everything, if beak is available, you can find any landmark. Beak is the single most landmark. It prevents you from disorientation and can take you to the other landmark. See, okay. I have widened the sphenoid osteum for my reference. When you work at the sphenoid sinus, Make sure you don't use anything blindly, sharp instrument inside the phenoid. The instrument yeah. we use inside the phenoid is almost always a suction. See, widen the phenoid sinus. This is my skull base. See that? Yes, sir. This way you can discover the skull base. Here is my lamina papricia. See how I am discovering the landmarks. Yes, sir. This was some polyp. This is lamina. All polypoidal disease along this. Along sir. the septum as well. 
what was the complaint of this patient headache yes the see the another important thing about the sinus injuries disease we all know the sinus disease is mostly painless patient might be having pain sinusitis yes characteristically many a time but once you operate once you do scarring give scarring once you give neo osteogenesis yes, it becomes sir. symptomatic so patient who was not getting surgery done earlier becomes symptomatic now yes sir that is more troublesome to see now the picture has changed now yes sir this is our sinus sinus yes this sir. is our ethmoidal skull base see the mucosa there yes sir middle terminate is completely chopped see that yes sir and what i found this is my lamina papyracea i can feel it yes see sir this? and what i found above is the beak yes sir see this is my beak i can see yes sir this is my beak i can feel the hard bone yes and sir. i will show you from below as well yeah, like the no yes sir so discovering the landmarks in revision cases is always sometimes challenging and interesting as well yes sir sir practically in our practice many a times we are confused that the headache is due to migraine or due to chronic sinusitis something like that because my yesterday three things always yes. keep three things in mind headache due to sinusitis will many a times will be preceded by any uri or something it is relieved by the antibiotic and steroid i am not talking of pain killer yes sir and thirdly you will confirm with some or other sign in the on endoscopy sir can you repeat these three points number 1 most of the time it is preceded by an episode of uri yes sir viral or whatever allergy uri whatever yes sir secondly it is resolved by antibiotic steroid not pain killers yes sir sinusitis attack you give antibiotic steroid it resolve yes sir migraine will not resolve with antibiotic steroid yes sir and thirdly there will be some or other evidence of you know trs on endoscopy see the narrow narrow recess a yes. thick beak the entire polyps is i removed from this region see the scarring in this region yes sir so now what i will do i will remove the this beak this is the beak see this is the obstacle yes sir sinus is behind there this is the beak yes sir so i had a couple of people who approached me yesterday to show once again step by step the draft yes sir. now see this is the ideal case for that kind of demonstration you all must be able to do a draft with full confidence no fear see the frontal now see this is our interest hello yes sir this is the area of interest of drilling and all and the skull base is behind there see this yes sir now how will we define that by means of defining the first olfactory neuron yes sir so let me remove this mucosa from here from the area of interest see now how much that is yes. your beak yes sir coming 1 cm anteriorly 1 cm below see this yes sir i'm going far anteriorly 
Yes, sir. On the adjoining septum also. This is ablation I am using. Yes, sir. See the beauty of ablation. You can complete the entire job without any bleeding. See, I am working still anterior to the beak. Yes, sir. My guide is the beak. My beak is there. You see that? Yes, sir. I am far anterior to the beak, so I have no issues damaging anything behind. Yes, okay? sir. Yes, sir. Now, let me show you how to discover the first olfactory neuron. See, I am still far anterior to the beak. Yes, sir. For the section for yours. Section for yours. See, I am raising this mucosal flap. Behind. Yes, sir. Yeah. See this mucosal flap? This is my level of the beak now. Yes, sir. This is my level of the beak now. See carefully. Yes, sir. Now I have to go almost a centimeter behind to get that. See now, such a safety margin I was taking all the time. Yes, sir. Just to show you better. See, this is all floor of the frontal sinus. Yes, sir. Now see behind. Yes, that sir. is a much better picture now. See the slab I am raising now. Yes. That is the level of the beak laterally you can see. Yes, sir. And now I will keep raising it behind. See this? Yes, sir. First, laterally, I will find a nerve. Yes, sir. This is anterior model now. Yes, sir. Laterally. Yes, sir. And if I go behind, behind this level, will yes, be sir. my first sulfate neuron. That is behind. See this, this, this is the now above. A neuron is behind. That is a neuron. See here, where my just anterior to the second tip. This is neuron. This is your now. See this now, thin now coming out. Yes, sir. See this. Yes, sir. Leave that and immediately be behind the next opening. That too medially. Yes, is sir. The I will show you the section better. This is just to show you. Sir, uh, the first one is coming is the branch of anterior ethmoidal artery. Artery and now, sometimes both branch. Okay, sir. The second one. Yes, sir. Medially. See that? Yes, sir. This one just behind my section. That is the thick one. That is the neuron. Yes. So, sir. idea is, see now, that is level of your beak also. See this? Yes, sir. Idea is, you don't have to come behind this level. That's it. Yes, sir. So, I have defined my area of the first olfactory neuron. See this. Compare with the level of the beak. Yes, sir. It is behind that level. Yes, Posterior sir. to that level. Yes, sir. Means, 
see the beak is coming at this level where my suction is and this neuron is behind that level here okay yes sir so two things we have seen first is expose this bone completely yes then define this neuron now yes. anteriorly is your playground do anything yes anteriorly you need to keep this thing in view yes sir as your posterior limit first solfactory neuron as your posterior limit it is for dusra line madan दूसरा मंगा सेव कल शाम को एक बड़ी चीज है वो दूसरा था मिनर स्टोर के को या या विद जीरो डिग्री ओनली हेलो यस सर सी द बोन एंटीरियर टू इट एंड सी द न्यूरोन आई होप यू आर ओरिएंटेड Yes, sir. Anybody has any doubt? Needing more orientation, more clarification? Please come forward. You can ask me hundred times, but should be very, very clear. Yes, sir. Now this bone I have to drill. Okay. Yes, sir. So area of interest is very clear. how to start yes sir see my drill yes sir that is the level of the beak yes sir i will start just below it and yes, define sir. my lateral limit first yes sir posterior limit first all big neuron i have already defined yes sir Lateral limit is your skin. Yes, sir. It has come. Yes. See that? Yes, sir. So, which drill do you use? Could you Coast elaborate diamond. on that? This is Metronic Stylus. Sir, autology drills can be used also with angled handle. Ah, uh, you can try, but see, this is so sleek. Yes, sir. Fifteen degree angle, seventy five thousand RPM. Yes, sir. Is there is no comparison to? Yes, sir. See that the outside skin? Yes, sir. See that outside skin? Yes, sir. Now this is my guide. Where we started? This was the axilla. Yes, sir. That was the beak, huh? Yes, sir. A few millimeters behind that, almost a centimeter behind that. Yes, sir. Now, I have defined my posterior limit here already. Yes, lateral sir. limit here. Now yes, keep sir. going anterior. Nowhere parallel to this skin. Yes, sir. All the time, keep an eye on the skin. Nothing else. Yes, sir. The more and more skin. I am following. Yes, sir. No time will finish. Yes, sir. What is next? Don't tell me. See my skin. I am following. Yes, sir. Keep going anteriorly and following the skin. Keep anteriorly. Yes, sir. We are going away from the olfactory neuron. Yes, sir. See my skin has a lateral limit. Yes, sir.
See what I have drilled? Yes, sir. This is part of the beak. Yes, sir. You have to go more and more anterior. Yes, sir. Now see the frontal sinus. Yes, sir. That is my frontal. So I yes. need to keep going more and more anterior. Yes. Now sir. I have already defined limits the skin laterally, which is going to be followed anteriorly as well and become the anterior limit later. Yes, sir. Medially, we know anteriorly towards the intersinus septum till yes. wherever you want to go. Posteriorly, fix you cannot cross that. Yes, sir. See, this thick bone is still left. Yes, sir. See how thick this bone is. Yes, sir. Hmm. This says the coarse diamond bar. Yes, sir. The beauty it is very safe. Using a seventy five thousand RPM, sixty thousand right now. Yes, sir. Makes it faster. Wonderful, no? Funny. Irrigation, irrigation. See the lateral limit. Yes, sir. This is our posterior limit. See, this is the beak level. Yes, sir. I mean, new from CT scan, it was quite thick. Yes. Sir. Now, see my olfactory neuron is behind. Yes, sir. It's staying anterior to it, I can go medially as well. Yes, sir. The bright, huh? See this hyperplastic mucosa. Yes, sir. Bad mucosa. See the frontal sinus in yes. depth. And see the limits. You keep getting the level of the limits. Yes, sir. That how much bone is left behind. Because skin is your limit. Yes, sir.
Sir, what we are using is 15 degree angled burr. This has a natural curvature of 15 degrees. Yes. This coarse diamond burr comes with this angulation. See the frontal? Yes, sir. More and more frontal being exposed. See the condition of the mucosa, it was so bad. Yes. See, my first sulfate in neuron is left behind. Yes, sir. The thin bone is separating. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, please. Sir. See, this thin bone is separating, this one. To widen the anteroposterior, I can thin out this bone more. See this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I cannot go beyond this. Yes, sir. Yes, you are asking something. Hello. Yes. Please. Sir, the, just to reorient, uh, can you show us where is the nasolacrimal duct in relation to this drilling? Yes. In a panoramic view, can you show us the area of yeah, the yeah, nasolacrimal Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a minute. Section. See this. This is your middle metal antrosomy. Yes. That is the area. This is the area of the orbit. This one yes. is orbit. This is middle metal antrosomy. Above that is orbit. Yes, sir. This anterior bulge, this belongs to the nasolacrimal system. Yes, sir. And somewhere here, in the floor of the orbit is going to be the nasal lacrimal duct. Here, yes, here. Sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is middle metal antrosomy. It is immediately anterior to it. Yes, sir. So we are miles from uh, all the structures. This frontal was giving so much of problem to this patient. This yes. Time. And now, now the beauty is not only ventilation and drainage. We have opened the avenue for the topicals to reach freely now. Yes, freely. Yes. See the frontal. Hello. Yes, sir. You can widen as much as you want. Yes, sir. Sir, what is the size of this burr? This is 4 mm. Generally, I use 4.5. Bigger the burr, safer it is. Yes, sir. Yes. See the frontal sinus? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's a big, big opening which cannot be achieved without a drop. See that? Yes, sir. The goal is see my, my uh, this uh, first sulfate neuron is behind. This is first sulfate neuron area. Yes, sir. And our job is to stay just anterior to it. Yes, sir. Behind is this, anteriorly this is skin. See this? Laterally yes. this is skin. Medially we have reached up to septum. I can drill more if required. You can go even beyond the intersinal septum. It depends yes. upon how much 
is needed according to this patient. To me, this for this patient, this is adequate. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, patient, can you show us the area of anterior ethmoidal artery? Oh, that is far behind. Anterior ethmoidal artery courses the posterior most part of the anterior ethmoidal roof. Yes. See sir. what I am trying to say. I will show you the artery. Yes. See, sir. here is the frontal sinus ending. Yes, sir. That is the beginning of the ethmoidal roof. Yes, sir. That is demarcated by the false olfactory neuron. Yes, sir. Now from here, keep going behind, keep going behind, keep going behind, keep going behind. Yes, See the sir. artery. Yes, sir. See the vessel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you identify? Yes, sir. This course says to the posterior most part of the anterior roof means immediately after that the posterior roof starts. Yes, sir. If you see the anterior artery any point of time, immediately yes, after that the posterior roof starts. Yes, sir. So your artery is far behind. Yes. See, sir. this was the frontal sinus. And this artery, now yes, from the beak, see this is the level of the beak we are drilling. Yes. Sir. Artery is centimeters behind. Yes, sir. So don't worry about the artery. Artery courses far behind in the post model roof. Yes, Hello. sir. Hello, sir. Yeah. Usually there is a fixed uh, small cell just below the frontal sinus between sure. the anterior ethmoidal artery and the frontal sinus opening. That this is supraorbital cell laterally. See this. Yes. Yeah, can you see this cell? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Going little laterally high up. Can you see this? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Going little laterally high up. This is supraorbital. Whenever you find the supraorbital cell, yes, sir. That's a great landmark to the artery. Greatest, uh, very like if I find a supraorbital cell here, my yes. entry model artery will be immediately behind it. Yes, In, sir. Yes, sir. The posterior one of the supraorbital recess. Sometimes. We have a big super which is even bigger than the frontal sinus, you know? Yes. Why is it? In those situations, your heart is always behind. You can push far behind because of the supraorbital. See the yes. final picture? Yes, sir. Now he will do well, I suppose. Now frontal sinus problem. See this with this big opening. And now the irrigation has the ability to penetrate deeply into the sinus. Yes. He sir. should do well. Can you see the picture? Yes, sir. Anterior artery much behind. See this? Yes, sir. Far behind the intermodal roof. Immediately behind that the post model roof starts. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Sir, the raw area which is created, it will heal yes. by mucosa, isn't it, sir? Yes, yes. In no time. You just need to continue with the irrigations. Uh, hello, sir. Yes, please. Sir, how do you ensure that the irrigation reaches the frontal sinus area? So, what we follow are the studies done earlier? Sir, ever you feel that the raw area should be covered by a flap? Hmm? Raw area should be covered. Raw area will not need. Earlier it was, you know, was an urge to cover this because the chances of stenosis were more when the, you know, this practice of irrigation was not prevalent. Now, since the practice of irrigation, steroids, steroid is the strongest factor, you know, controls the inflammation and prevents the neo-osteogenesis. And the frontal sinus drain has no well, no use in your practice, isn't it, sir? Never. Never. A good surgery doesn't need all this, I tell you. Sir, yes. Sir? Hello. Yes. Delegates are asking about the septal perforation which was there in the previous in this case. Just yeah. you. 
so the patient was not bothered about it. It is asymptomatic. We don't we don't do anything. Okay. Capital perforation is a different entity. Usko chahiye. Very very. It's a different entity uh, which deserves treatment in case they are symptomatic. Hello, sir. Yes. So the previous case, retrospectively, if you go through the CT or MRI, could you pick up some points uh, to hint towards the invasive aspergillosis? Yes. I had a doubt, but not confirmatory. The reason was, I tell you, this was a proven case of see the CT scan or MRI of the previous case. It was a proven case of AFRS. Sir, are you going to come back to that case after the frozen section? Yeah, what happened to the frozen? Frozen? I am waiting. We'll not do anything. There is no doubt about it. Uh, clinically, I know. So, I still will wait for it. It's no, no, pure no. classical aspergillosis, how it presents. See, coming to a question, are there radiological criteria to point out radiological criteria to point out invasive aspergillosis? Had this been a primary case without the bias finding of AFRS by the previous surgeon, I would certainly be suspicious of this thing. Biopsy. The reason is, here the MRI, this disappearance, the dark signal on T2 is classical of fungus. Localized area with visual loss symptoms, I would definitely think of invasive aspergillosis. Again, invasive aspergillosis only. But we had a background of information of treated patient of AFRS. There also the fungus, this also presents like this. So you cannot, not have been sure by any means. Any other question, please? Sir, instead of this uh, uh, surgical uh, option, if so, we would have given him POSAC one as well, uh, on the basis of the radiology... We, we need a histopathological confirmation of mucosal invasion of aspergillosis. Oh, yes. Without that, how can we give? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your ophthalmologist opinion about VEMP visually evoke potentials in the optic nerve. I mean, such slow growing visual issues with a lesion in surrounding compressing doesn't require all these investigations. That is so obvious. That is required in sudden loss of vision cases, visual evoke potential and other tests. Yeah, this is slowly compressing lesion, giving like pituitary cases, slowly compressing adenomas on the optic chiasma, giving bitemporal hemianopia. So these are slowly giving lesions and they are they tend to recover once this compression inflammation is resolved. Mostly recover. Yes. Sir. Unless the vision lost had been of long duration. Sir, after, uh, in the post-operative period, sometimes the middle turbinate tends to uh, develop sinica at the lateral wall. So what precautions do you take so that the uh, middle turbinate stays close to the septum? Uh, that is very bad because that sinica in the middle turbinate Uh, you know, prevents your topicals to reach into the sinuses. It prevents aeration also, ventilation drainage also. So that has to be 
you know, separated and given a wide opening. You may have to do some surgical exercise. No, sir. Intraoperatively, what pro steps do you take? Do you bulgarize your middle turban? Do you take a stitch? Or... Yeah, there are many ways to do that. One I have already shown you twice. That is micro fracturing and stabilizing it medially along the septum. Second is bulgarization. Third is suturing. You can take along with the septum inferiorly, not superiorly. to block the access of air to the olfactory area fourth is partial resection you can take the lower part i have shown earlier yesterday there are many ways to do with that same thing okay thank you sir sir uh, for basic face surgery after the operation what are the your treatment protocol for how many days you you will use the uh, steroid at at, at what doses not always steroid depending upon the Even profile the of the patient or what we are operating if it is a eosinophilic disease obviously we need to use steroid if it is very aggressive high inflammatory profile we may have to use for longer period if it is not eosinophilic like odontogenic cystic fibrosis pediatric you don't have to use steroid too much so but post operative protocol is very very important to ensure your topical reaching everywhere number 1 number 2 your surgical work dictates the post operative need of post operative care if you are meticulous with the mucosa preserving surgery your post operative crusting will be less and less okay post operative necrotic areas crusting fibrosis will be less and less and will require less intervention as for as a, in terms of debridement cleaning and all that goal is to preserve the mucosa why this surgery is functional why it is functional endoscopic sinus because ultimately the function is going to be served by mucosa only yes sir so sir. hello yeah. yeah sir question uh, regarding invasive fungal sinusitis yes uh, when bone is involved uh, it yeah. uh, osteomyelitic like bone so how to take care of that see normally in invasive aspergillosis the bone is destroyed that's how the fungus enters the second compartment in this patient the bone of the medial wall was destroyed bone of the ethmoidal roof was destroyed and that's how fungus was going beyond the confines of paranasal sinuses yes the bone is destroyed it doesn't matter it doesn't make any difference in your treatment protocol the moment you diagnose on the day one you have to start with a loading dose of voriconazole that is lethal to aspergillosis yes sir so in the normal douching after uh, face surgery what yeah. do we suggest and how do we prepare the douches what is the positioning of the dousing yeah so i'll come in the afternoon to show our positions how do we do that so yes. basically we use two positions the aim is to deliver effectively in the olfactory region and frontal sinus yes sir those are the challenging areas Yes. maxillary sphenoid are not a big challenge yes sir ultimately the solution is going to go there because they are dependent sinuses yes sir ensuring topical reaching in the frontal is a challenge and that's why we recommend either uh, the prayer position namaz position yes sir you know you bend on the knees and go uh, uh, sit on the ground and then bring your head forward on the ground prayer position namaz position that will allow the solution to go directly into the olfactory region and the second one is lying head back lie lie supine and extend your head down by 60 degree or so and that will allow again the solution reaching into that area so according to the comfort of the patient you can dictate So, uh, for isnophilic uh, CRS, uh, do you use uh, nasal sprays? 
प्रीऑपरेटरी और पोस्ट ऑपरेटरी पोस्ट ऑपरेटरी को भी नेजल स्प्रे जब नो रोल नाउ यू हैव ओपन द साइनसेस फॉर द रीजन दैट यू नीड टू इंट्रोड्यूस द स्टीरॉइड डीप इनटू द साइनसेस ओके सर दिस स्प्रे आई हैव मेंशन कपल ऑफ टाइम यस्टरडे दे डू नॉट क्रॉस बियॉन्ड द एंटीरियर वन थर्ड ऑफ द नेजल कैविटी यस सर व्हाट इज द पॉइंट इन यूजिंग नेजल स्प्रे पोस्ट ऑपरेटिवली वी आर फोर्स टू यूज देम प्री ऑपरेटिवली Forced to use because there is no other way. Sinuses are not open. Yes, sir. Uh, so preoperatively, how many uh, days or month you use sprays? We discuss depending upon the symptomatology of the patient. Depending upon. the efficacy if they are working able to control inflammation we can continue with that okay. if not if the profile of the patient inflammatory profile is too high we have to remove the inflammatory load by surgery and giving access to deeper penetration of topicals yes sir uh, for stenophilic cs again uh, how before surgery how many Uh, days before the surgery, you use the steroid at a what doses? Before surgery, yes. For preparation. So, yeah, for the preparation. Yes, sir. For the surgical preparation. Yes, sir. Let me get that one. So, preoperative preparation depends. You know, it is not hard and fast. The aim is to reduce the inflammation. as much as possible now depending upon the comfort and other issues generally we give minimum for 5 days it can be given for 10 days 14 days to reduce the inflammation at minimum you have to counsel your patient your surgery will be done best when your symptoms are in fully control Yes, sir. To the level that you will find there is no need of surgery, and that would be the best time for surgery. Okay, sir. We can we can deliver our best during that time. So, which molecule we use? Prednisolone. At what doses? Start with a sixty milligram. Keep tapering to thirty, twenty, ten, like that. Starting from T sixty. Yes. Yes. Okay, sir. sir how are we managing post operative sinicias first of all prevention is more important and there are you know reasons for the sinicia there are two reasons which if not taken care of during um, uh, intraoperative work leads to sinicia number one non corrected dns without correcting passing your instrument through the narrow passages again and again you know damages the surface mucosa and if opposing surfaces are damaged can invite sinicia this is one of the biggest reason and if sinicia develop your entire purpose of surgery is failed because now this will not allow the solution to go deeply inside a single mistake of non correcting the dns to the level that topical reaches effectively can result in overall failure in spite of having done a good you know surgical exercise of sinus surgery okay single mistake so this is the biggest reason other way and the second one is the turbinate untreated middle turbinate or so can invite sir for after septoplasty surgery which which solution you we use for douching wooden side i i will come in the afternoon to show all this post operative care we use the wooden side respules sir sir when this sinicia has formed when we follow up our cases if the sinicia is there we intervene just now we wait for some time or if the sinicia is there how to surgically cure it or yeah you have to remove with the coagulator i showed you yesterday in one of the case yes sir if you remember remove with the coagulator and then correct the underlying cause if dns correct the dns 
and then packing for a while will prevent. Coblet is the best tool to break those synechias. It is not only separating the synechia which is important. Following that, you need to treat the cause behind the synechia which is mostly DNS. The packing needs to be kept for a while, right? Or some barrier, something else, silicon sheeting or wax plates that can that can those be used or just by coblator and correcting dns or something like that will do pardon pardon can you uh, suppose we have corrected the synechia then uh, dns something everything has been done after that we will pack the nose right so yeah. there that has to be kept for some longer duration some inert material not like really metal. not really if you are still finding the space is narrow you can put a silicon silicon splint for a, a week or so otherwise you start your post operative irrigation and settle down yes, okay. if you have uh, adequate space you have done um, the underlying correction then you don't need to most of the time okay sir. but synechia is one thing you have to vigilate you have to prevent synechia formation, you have to treat synechia. Otherwise, your entire purpose may be defeated. Hello? Hello? Hello, sir. Yeah, do we go to the next case? See, sure, sir. Yes, sure, sir. Yes. So this next case is a, again an interesting one. See this revision situation. Yes, sir. See this. The hardly any disease. Hardly any disease behind number one. See the sphenoid are clear? Yes, sir. Post moids clear? Yes, sir. Back there. As a, as a good middle meter antrosmy, some mucosal edema there. That's it. Coming okay. anteriorly. Anteriorly. Now see the frontal recess work. And see the neo osteogenesis. See the frontal sinus condition. Uh, yes, sir. The walls destroyed at places and patient has a headache. Okay, sir. See the condition of the frightening look of frontal sinus. Such a frightening look where the walls gone, dehiscence at multiple places. Operated earlier, what to do? You tell me. Say this. Sir, so by looking at the CT scan, how do you know that uh, frontal disease is uh, stenosis is there? See this. This is complete blockage of the frontal outflow area. This frontal outflow area completely blocked. Yes, sir. And then multiple dehiscences in the walls of the frontal sinus. Okay, sir. In an operated case earlier. Yes, sir. These are most complex cases for, you know, final solution. And see how the how narrow the frontal uh, uh, outflow has become. Look at the sagittal side. See this? Osteogenesis, neo osteogenesis, bone erosions, and see this is frontal sinus. In the frontal recess, the cells were not completely cleared. Can you see? Yes, sir. Yes. This is the region of incomplete work in the frontal recess, which has led to such a major problem. The sinus becomes non draining. See the neo osteogenesis. Full of disease, giving symptoms. I told you, 
frontal sinus requires a dedicated approach. Either don't go there to the frontal recess if not involved, and if it is, do the complete job with mucosal preservation. Otherwise, it is more of inviting problem than giving solution. See such a com complex frontal sinus in this patient. And this requires a draft 3. Somebody asked in the morning about the indications of draft and non-draft situation. Look at the classical draft 3 indication. Can you see? Yes, sir. How can you ensure establishing a good pathway for the post-op? This is supraorbital cell. This is supraorbital cell. This is cribriform in place, supraorbital cell. This is frontal sinus proper. This is intersinus septal cell. This is the right frontal sinus. This patient, such kind of patient, requires a more radical. Radical means in the process which is radical, bigger one. The surgery is not radical. Surgery is still functional. Surgery is still functional. will re-establish the ventilation drainage. Re-establish the pathway for irrigation. It's completely functional surgery. Though it is an approach is radical to remove the bone completely to make it functional. Got my point? Yes, sir. See the state of this kind, uh, this state of frontal sinus on the opposite side. So bad. It's very challenging. The same, left. And these are the frontals which are most challenging. Now, in draft 3, what you need to do additionally of draft 2? Yes. So, you need to do draft 2 on both sides along with Septum. Removal of the intersinus septum to give a common cavity and removal of the upper part of the nasal septum to mass supply the entire floor in the frontal sinus uh, of the frontal sinus in the nasal cavity. This is what needed in this case. I hope it is very clear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is one of the most uh, uh, severe aspects of the frontal sinus disease you can think of. Now, I will show you the sagittal section alone. See this. See the level of the dura. See the distinct appearance of the frontal sinus and the brain. Can you see the signal difference? Yes, sir. This is the outline of the brain. And this is sinus because the dura is intact. And this is all bone which is creating problem. Must be some osteomyelitis inside. The way bone piece is there. So, a challenging frontal sinus, soon we are going to start. Any questions or anything before that? Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Please continue, sir. There is no okay. question. Ready? Uh, 
मैच खेल गया है हेलो 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 सर हेलो हेलो आर यू गुड यस सर सर डॉक्टर सतीश जस्ट वन हेलो सर डू यू टेक न्यूरो सर्जन ओपिनियन इन ईच एंड एवरी केस ऑफ सच केसेस नॉट रियली देव नो एनी इंटरकेनल इश्यूज वाई टू ओके सतीश वन स्मॉल क्वेश्चन यस प्लीज बॉस Are you still considering the anteroposterior diameter when you are uh, doing uh, lothrops? Always. Okay. That is one of the most important determinant of giving a wide cavity. Right. The entre anteroposterior diameter should be adequate. Inadequate anteroposterior diameter will not will uh, very difficult for the uh, you know this patency to remain in those situations. Right. See the anteroposterior dimension that you have to see on CT scan, and that is the only condition. Sometimes when we are not able to give that, and if you see from the CT, there are small frontal sinuses. We think of obliterating rather than giving a drainage for doing. Okay, so so a so, narrow AP diameter may be a detriment to doing a lothrop. Yeah. Okay. Now see in this particular case. in this particular case yes. with such big frontal sinuses see this yes see this such huge frontal sinuses will it be easier to remove all the mucosa completely and do an obliteration next to impossible okay there are such huge frontal sinuses with so many you know uh, scallopings and all that Right from C, almost the distance I measure if see this size. One eighty three millimeter. Okay. This big, complete removal of the mucosa. Hello, sir. Yes. In this case, also you will do the orbital transposition. Not really. Not needed. Why? But if we, if uh, because these are very big sinuses. No, no. That is not the indication for that. That is the indication is that if there is some laterally segregated disease which is compressing either onto the orbit or brain with no drainage inside. and that drainage is blocked because of this medial and superior part of the orbit in those situation yes here yeah, once you do a lothrop it will be all clear yes sir so such big frontal sinuses if you think of obliteration it is next to impossible removing each and every bit of mucosa From all areas of frontal sinuses and drilling the entire sinus to ensure no mucosa remaining, and then obliterating is a big, big challenge. For such big sinuses, you have to establish drainage. Small sinuses that is possible. Drainage is difficult in those sinuses, but removal of the mucosa is easier, and those are the cases which are good for obliteration. Uh, sir. Yes, please. Sir, how do you manage uh, frontal sinus osteomyelitis or osteitis, and how do you diagnose it? Diagnosing is sometimes a challenge, but mostly that happens to occur in immunocompromised patients. Mostly. 
particularly diabetics. Osteomyelitis is a non-functional bone, a vascular bone. And uh, there is no medical treatment to it unless you remove that bone. There is no penetration of antibiotics there when there is no vascularity. So first and the foremost is debridement of all that non-functional tissue, bone or whatever. And then institute according to the histopathology and culture and all that antibiotics. So do you consider uh, cranialization of frontal sinus in such cases? <laughs> Not cranialization has certain indications I'll share in the afternoon with you. So osteomyelitis anywhere in the body has same principle. When there is that necrotic tissue, bone, whatever, you have to get rid of it. Otherwise, nothing is going to work. See the picture? Hello? Yes, sir. You saw the uh, CT scan findings in this patient? Yes, yes. Let's see the pure lens on the left side? Yeah. I'm taking a culture. Some polypoidal serous tissue. Right side was good. The problem lies in the frontal, which is not obvious on needle endoscopy. See that? Yes. Some purulence coming from above. See this? Right. Because non drainage of the sinus leading to those bony erosions. So, this is an interesting case. Okay. Topical preparation as usual. For all patients, same protocol, same topical preparation protocol, same anesthesia protocol, by and large standardized. See the purulence coming from above in the opposite side. See this? Hello? Yes, yes, we can. Yes, that, that reflects the disease in the frontal sinus above. Yeah. So now we're starting on the left side. We have done some uh, decongestion now, decongesting the middle meters.
See the pure lens coming from above. Yes. Sir, any specific protocol? Which side you do first? Not really. But once you are doing Lothrops, first of all, you start from the more roomy side. Number one. Second, you start from the side where, you know, anatomical distortion is less. So, so your identification of the landmark is much easier. Your um, disorientation chances are less. So as a general well rule, done. approach the difficult areas last. Huh? Yes. As the general rule. Because you, you are not supposed to get disoriented in the beginning view. you uh, enter the difficult areas in the beginning. You are absolutely correct, sir. See the space opened up. Mucosa look decongestant. Yes, sir. This five to ten minutes work is very important. Now, let's start our work. I don't know the, what the previous surgeon has done in the... See, this is unseen it. Yes, sir. So I am working for the maxillary sinus first. Direct little inferiorly. See this? And this is your middle metal entrosmy. This is my middle metal entrosmy which I can make better with the... See the purulence? Yes, sir. This is the ancinate, lower part of the ancinate. That person is green. Is it suggestive of pseudomonas? Yeah, could be. Green color first. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Sir, what is the role of Rubina camera in face? Pardon? Rubina camera in I have never used no experience. To me, so far, size is the best. I have not used anything about that. Now see the upper part of the ancinate.
this takes you closest to the lamina papracia. See the lamina? Yes, sir. The only one tool is working. Different, different ways of doing the same thing. My limit here is lamina, which I am defining. This is forty rad blade. Yes. And zero only degree. one tool is working. See, it was full of purulent secretion which have been cleared off. This is axilla. Open up the axilla thoroughly. Don't leave the cells along the axilla. You know? Yes, sir. This work done in one go. Revision case, bone distractions. Everything made me feel like I may have to do draft straight away. But looking at the purulence and all that, I may have to change my mind. Hello? Yes, sir. Conditions look much better. Now 70. This side frontal was not bad, you know. Let's see if it works out. Now with a 70. How is the picture there, sir? Fantastic. One. See now, where I am trying to uh, take you and telling you since yesterday, beak, 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 beak. God has given this beak to us as a great landmark. And beak is most easily identifiable. See this axilla? Yes, sir. Go under the axilla. Feel the hard bone. And this is your frontal. See, that is the end of my axilla, the beak. Sir, there are two openings at the roof. Mm, that is the skull base I opened. <laughs> Section. See the CSF? Yes, sir. The distortion, the medial distortion. See the turbinate level. Can you see? And at the turbinate level, for the leak. Yeah, you are what you are asking two openings. 
Yes, Hello. Sir. Yes, sir. Which two openings? The superior aspect. See, don't look into that. Look into only one thing: beak. See this beak? Hello. Yes, sir. When beak is ending, you have to go underneath the beak. See what I was seeing medially. See this? Looking at more pneumatized space took me. Fortunately, towards the CSL space. See that? Yes, sir. We'll repair that. Yeah. <laughs> Bone is pretty hard here. One. See the beak area above and the purulence above. Hmm? Only one twenty one pounds. See the beak area above the purulence? Yes, sir. Sir, this uh, can we predict on the CT this uh, CSF gusher which has been started? No, no, that was uh, our mistake, not CT scan. But, uh, see the cellularity here. In the revision cases, gives you optical distortion that you are laterally or medially sometimes. See this? That's the frontal sinus. Yes, sir. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes. That's the frontal sinus above. I'm widening maximum possible. And that will finally help me decide whether the need of draft is there or not. See how posterior we were at the CSR place. Hello? Yes, sir. This is our frontal sinus. See, this is our frontal sinus anteriorly. Yes, sir. Behind that is supraorbital recess. We saw this patient at a huge supraorbital cell. That is frontal sinus. Give me a. You don't have to do to anything to the CSF now. Let it pass off. How does it know? Hello? Yes, sir. Now in the frontal, I am washing off. See the purulent secretions. Hello? Yes, sir. What don't Sir, what was the key rose in this patient? Was it a high key rose? I don't think. I will show you. Can we see the can we see the CT scan now, sir? Can we? Yeah, I will get back to CT again, no problem. That is a frontal sinus, much anteriorly, that is supraorbital recess. I got confused medially because of these cells. See this? Looking at the revision situation, I thought previous surgeon must have done something, and it was my mistake here. We will seal it anyway. Yeah. See now the frontal sinus very well. Yes, sir.
this is supraorbital recess i told you immediately caudal to the supraorbital recess this supraorbital immediately caudal should be anterior caudal artery see the vessel there yes sir now we can understand sir the point of entry of the anterior ethmoidal artery into the skull base is the weakest area yes where we can there is a it's a vulnerable area for csf isn't yes. it yes slightest mistake can push you for the leak see the artery very clear yes sir and see the frontal looks very nice since it was a purulent disease not very highly or not very bad mucosa meter this is irrigating the frontal hello yeah yes sir irrigating the frontal sir shouldn't we address the csf leak in view of uh, irrigations and the purulence that is surrounding this area and all that can contaminate the csf space so you have to seal it to prevent further contamination there is no choice but to seal it one point chatish yeah there is no choice but to seal it obviously once there is a, a breach you have to seal it anyhow without any doubt and we'll seal it no time Shatish, yes, sir. It's Professor Sen Gupta from Kolkata PG Hospital. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to know whether you will repair the theater in the same setting. Suppose this occurs, we have to 100%, do it. Percent, hundred percent. Once you know there is a leak, you cannot leave it to, you know, give problems in the future. Is there any chance of complication opening on the facial plan? Yes, sir. Leak. and is there any chance of complications of this case once you seal it there is hardly any chance of complication okay. if you don't seal it then in it can invite problem yeah sealing is going to solve the issue okay okay so we have to seal it without any doubt uh hi satish yes sir yeah. one small question that uh, hello yeah do we seal the csf then clean out the purulent secretions the secretions have been coming out see the, the secretions are not going to go in in any given situation wo dekho katambe wala secretions are not going to go in the pressure inside the cranial cavity is always more than outside okay nothing is going to flow inside Okay. See how the CSM is flowing out. So don't bother about that, Utamdola. Shatish, yes, please. So Professor Sen Gupta again. The uh, is this pass can lead to meningitis, which we have done by hydro debrider. If they, it can penetrate there. If the pass. No, if we are not pushing the hydro debrider there. I am using the hydro debrider to clean the frontal, sir. Yeah, if the. Pass be there remnant is there. Is there any chance of meningitis? Meningitis can happen. The infection invades the meninges dura. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and for that we will seal it and give antibiotics for a while. Okay. Nothing. This see, this is a fresh leak. It is the best chance to seal now. Going to the fresh margins. Yeah, beautiful design. Yeah. Beautiful. See now, I will rinse. There is, I can see some solution. There is it. See this. 
This is my moldable suction tip. <laughs> moldable suction tip. See, now the frontal is much better. Beautiful, beautiful. I don't think of, I told you initially, for changing my plan for the... Look at there. Now what I am doing this, see this. This is called removal of the middle terminate agar neji complex to give zero degree visualization to the frontal. See what I am doing. Including the upper part of the terminate I am removing. See this. To give zero degree visualization to this frontal. It's not doing draft, doing something additional to maintain visualization in the follow up and better penetration of, you know, drugs into this region. See the uppermost part of the terminate I have punched out. This defect is hardly anything, we'll close in no time. Not bothered now. So have you cancelled doing draft in this situation, sir? Yeah, the, see, the frontal looks so good. I don't see any aggressive disease in the frontal sinus. There was blockage, purulence gave bone destruction. And see what we have given. See the avenue. We cleaned everything and got a good avenue for irrigation also. Can you see? Yes, sir. There was no disease in the post sigmoid on both sides, in the front, sphenoid, both sides, everything clear. So this was the solution needed for the left side, the maxillary as well as frontal sinus along with the ethmoidal clearance. See that? Yes, sir. Sir, is there any criteria how yes. much widening of the frontal sinus should be done? Not really. People earlier used to measure in millimeters, centimeters, thinking of stenosis. But that yes. was a pre-irrigation pre -irrigation era. Now, since we are irrigating with a steroid, chances yes. of restenosis are remote, very yes. less. And secondly, you cannot measure in every case in the same way because the frontal sinus anatomy, ostium size is different in different individuals. Yes, sir. The only thing which can prevent is removal all septations. Yes, sir. From wall to wall, frontal sinus wall to wall. Yes, sir. So this type job is done. At the end, we will seal it as usual. Yes, sir. Without any issue. Yes, sir. The rest of the job in this side is done. Sir, is it beneficial to drill the floor? Hello. Yeah. Sir, is it beneficial to drill uh, the floor of the frontal sinus, say uh, the beak, a bit in every cases, with the, so that we can increase the size of the opening? See, the beak is too thick. Yes. See sir. This, this kind of a frontal sinus, to me, is more than enough. See the. Yes, sir. See the mucosa inside. We have cleared the disease. We have got a good opening. See the. We have removed this middle turbinate agonizy complex from above. So direct avenue for the topicals to reach there. Nothing more is required. Can you see here? Yes. This is so good. All yes. around. Completely agree. There is no need for any further modification. Yeah. yeah. So let's go to the opposite side. That was looking worse. So 
to one another. Here the opposite side picture. You have opposite side. Even the maxillary looks very good. The only concern in the opposite side is the antithmoid and frontal. Okay. Back by. Hello. Yes. 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 So starting the. See this. Rotate it inferiorly. Rotate yeah. little bit inferiorly. Yeah. Pointed downwards. Yeah. And let the ring. Fracture little down. This is the lower part of the unseen it. See this fragment of the lower part of the unseen it. Out completely. Now, with hardly any disease, they do not need a wide meatotomy. Yes, yes. Doesn't require mega osteum. Yes, not at all. This is adequate. Now, this upper part of the unseen it. I am taking with the yeah. 40 only. Now, at the lateral edge is going to be the orbit. Mm, yeah. So, this unseen it is coming. See, this unseen it joins the medial wall of the agar. This is the medial wall of the agar. Yes, yes, yes. This is your ground lamella. Oh, this is a bulla ethmodalis. Hmm. At this time, I will take 70 to show you up. Seventy. Now I am with a seventy degree up. I hope the picture is good. Yes, absolutely fine. Perfect. You know, this was the area where the unseen head is joining this medial wall of the agar. This is agar neji. Yes. This is unseen head in the medial wall. Yeah. I can take this unseen head agar complex. Go behind. See that? Yes, directly lead to frontal lysis. Yeah, that is frontal only. Now, at this point, what you can define? All instruments should be directed laterally here. Laterally. See, this is beak. Hello. Yes, yes. Yes, yes sir. Hard bone. Uh, this, this, this frontal, we had a massive disease on this side, very extensive bone erosions, narrow recess. As per radiological, yeah. 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 See, very narrow recess here. Now, this is bulla I am taking off. Most likely, this frontal will require a draft. Intraoperatively, you have to assess whether you will be given a, able to give a good stable opening for the future surveillance and irrigation. True. That is one of the most important criteria. Sir, at this yes, point. Please. Sir. Yeah, see my opening is very narrow. 
Yes, yes. And skull base. Not very can see this is frontal. Yeah, skull base behind. This is your beak. This is your beak. Yes, yes. Uh, this is narrow opening. Yes, sir. You are saying something, sir. At this point of time, is it feasible for us to locate the anterior ethmoid artery so that the other artery. side, the uh, accidental damage at its medial end caused CSF? Here, we have to be extra careful to see where yes. the ethmoid artery is there. Zero degree. See, identification of the anterior ethmoid artery, which is far behind the structure is not to way to identify the skull base. That was a mistake that we got disoriented because of the looking at the cellularity immediately. But yes, the skull base, you have to keep an eye. Particularly when you are working medially, this should not have happened. Working medially means you have to be doubly sure that you don't breathe the skull base. All your, that's why we say all instruments should be directed medially. Yeah. Identification of identification of entrance model artery to prevent the skull base is not the way. Shatish. Now I am with a zero degree. Yeah. And quickly accomplish the draft on this side. This was a bad function, frontal sinus, and the opening is very narrow. It is not like the previous one. Oh. See our lamina papracia? Yes, yes, quite protruding. This is your maxillary sinus, this is lamina, and that is your beak level. That is, is a beak, and I could see a very, very narrow, narrow recess. This is posterior moids. Yeah, yeah. Lateral lamina of the middle turbinate is the commonest site for the CSF leak. Where the middle turbinate is attached medially. Yes. Superiorly onto the cribriform. Yeah. Sir, show us the axilla of the middle terminate and yeah. extrapolating it back at the anterior. See, this is the axilla. Anterior edge of the beak. Yeah. See, that is axilla and the beak. And now I will quickly accomplish the draft. This frontal had bad appearance. The opening is very narrow. It is not like the opposite side where we could avoid the draft. Because we have to do a definitive treatment to this. Looking at the revision situation. Again, for those who wanted to see the draft, see the level of axilla. Yes, sir. A centimeter below the axilla and anteriorly. See this? Yes, sir. Define this bone. And then ascend superiorly. Sir, yes, please. The delegates want to know if they don't have the facility of coblator, which is other instrument where you can accomplish this step. Okay. Okay. Is the monopolar can, can the monopolar be used here? Monopolar can be used, but it is you know using any other difficult instrument is very cumbersome, difficult, or you can raise the mucosal flap completely. 
without coplation strategy i think it is a uh, very difficult to control the bleeding and yeah the very very troublesome frustrating very narrow cleft definitely frustrating मेक्स योर लाइफ सो इजी ऑबलेटर डिब्राइडर एंड ड्रिल ऑल आर इंपॉर्टेंट Satish, question yes. from what is that same want you are using for tonsil is using in nasal surgery or is different? Same went everywhere except larynx. Okay. Now see, I am going behind. Yes, yes, yes. For so first to find the skull base. Hmm. Finding first neuron. Yes. so that i define my posterior limit to avoid problem so that is the bone of uh, middle turbinate no 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 bone of middle turbinate that's the bone of frontal process of maxilla yes okay See to orient you. I remove this marrow cell now. This marrow cell I am removing to orient you. Okay, okay. We can see this. Now see. What's under? Sir, during the drilling, as uh, we have to drill the beak. So see, even this is your beak. Yes, sir. This is your beak. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is your frontal sinus floor. Yes, sir. You are coming backward. Hello. Yes, 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 yes sir. sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are Please. listening. Because yes, sir, sir. Sir, during uh, drilling. Hello. Yes, yes. We are with you. We are listening, sir. Are you getting our voice? Hello. Hello, sir. Are we audible to you? Hello. Satish, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Good. Okay. What happened? What happened? What happened to the audio? Yes. Sir, are you getting our voice? Hello. Hello. Sir. Hello. Ha. Are Hello. you getting our voice? Yeah, yeah. The audio was disturbed. Hello. Okay. Sir, yeah, can you? You are getting our voice. Yeah, now I can hear you. Oh, thank you, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, very well. Absolutely clear. See this. That is the level of the axilla, and that is going to the level of the first olfactory neuron here. Yes, sir. Medially. Yes, sir. So the sir. idea is why to define so that while widening behind, you don't yes. damage the. Don't cross this limit and don't damage anything behind. Yes, sir. So that's a very very important guide. Yes, sir. In any given scenario, the brighter. So my bone is now ready to be divided. Yes, sir. Hmm.
Mac. This is being done with a zero degree only. Yes. Let me clean the field, reorient you. For later. Make the field bloodless. See the pus is pouring out of the sinus. Yes. Yes, yes, we can see it. So now the area is clear. Give me drill. We'll start our drilling as usual. Find out. What is the role of the assistant always? Assistant role is very important to keep a sucker inside. See this drill as an irrigation. See now, starting just below the axilla. See the axilla there? Big there? Yes. Define defining the skin? Yes. later and then keep going up same step okay hello audio visual Ooh. now with outside the skin yeah, we can see. Moment. So you drill first uh, lower part, then you go superiorly. Keep going up. Yes, sir. That is the safest area, isn't it, sir? Safest area. Keep going anteriorly. Following the skin. It's outside the skin. Yes. Of later. Of later. See the outside skin plane. Is yes. Yes, yes, sir. No clean thing. This is frontal sinus. 
See now we are head on into the frontal sinus with zero degree. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Such a narrow recess. Is such a narrow recess? Yes. Drill. It's a challenging sinus on this side. Suction. Sir? Yes, please. Can we theoretically can we use fluorescein by a frontal sinus trephine in this case? What what? By frontal sinus trephine, if you put the fluorescein, we will know the fluorescein. Yes. Yeah, that is one of the way. If you are lost, you are not able to find. But once you are doing draft, then there is no need. We come to know the frontal sinus tract uh, confirmatively. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that is one of the way I told you. That you push anything die from outside. Of later. You are right, that is one of the way. That small vial costs 100 rupees. Pardon? Yeah, yeah. Small vial costs 100 yeah, rupees. Yeah, yeah. Topical fluorescein is of use at many places. Topical use. This is your frontal sinus. See the bad frontal sinus. That is bad disease. Reverse, you know. Can we probe it with a ball probe, sir? Yeah, yeah. Yes, see this. This is frontal sinus. This is frontal sinus. This one. Yes. This is yes, sir. No, 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 how narrow a recess, how narrow a recess it is. We can assume. Sir, supra supramedial wall of orbit is intact or it has been? Uh, yes, yes, yes. That is our limit to go above and behind. That is our limit. See the frontal sinus interior of the frontal. Yes, sir. That is interior of the frontal sinus. We need a hydro debrider now, is it, sir? Not really. There is nothing much collected inside to remove by, uh, you know, hydro debrider. But we can't see the mucosa still. Uh, mucosa is bad. Mucosa is bad. See the overall frontal sinus mucosa. Overall, it is so bad. Very bad mucosa. Funny. 
Yes. So the void opening of the frontal. Okay. Here is all in front of you is a frontal. This all entire thing in front of you is frontal. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Only thing disappointing is the mucosa is so bad. Sir, in the CT we saw a huge frontal sinus, isn't it? Pardon? In the CT scan we saw a huge frontal sinus. What? What? We saw a very big front frontal sinus in the CT scan. Yeah, not on this side. This side, the recess was narrowed. That's what I'm looking at. See this mucosa inside? Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. I'm going to go there. 120. The recess was narrow because of the very narrow space between the two walls. There was some Dyson's, na, sir, on right side, post yeah, Many places were Dyson. See, this is the posterior table. Yes, 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 sir. Anterior table we have removed. Yes. Yes, sir. And in between the space is very narrow. See, the mucosa was bad. See this? Right, right, sir. Right, sir. Far laterally, till far laterally. It is bleeding, that means it is inflamed. Yeah, inflammation. But the only thing will save us now is the steroids. Steroid irrigation. Can we put a pure adrenaline patty there? Yes, we can. It's not such an extensive bleeding. So there are bare areas. So pre-mucosal graft or anything can help over that area. The bare areas are bad areas from prognostic point of view. But again, steroid is the answer for the mucosalization also. Such a huge frontal. See the big frontal. Right. Sir. With this lateral or recess going up. Anterior wall we have completely removed. I'll show you the limits. Section there. See the lateral limit. Reorient your see the frontal in front of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, this is the outer skin. Can you see? Right, yes, sir. sir. We cannot go beyond the limit. And this skin is, see, I am following it anteriorly as well. Right, sir. Same skin. This is the anterior limit. Yes, see sir. See the limit everywhere. This is your interior of the frontal sinus. And see the state of the mucosa. See, this is the raw area, what madam was saying. Can you see? Right, sir. Yes, right, sir. sir. And this is all bad mucosa, which is now exposed to the thyroid therapy. Right, sir. Right, what sir. my point? Right, sir. What is Are that? you oriented? Sir, what is that leash of bone at the floor of the ostium of the frontal sinus? Here, this yeah. bone. Uh, yeah. This, is, this is the bone which is separating from the... Uh, this thing, um, uh, supraorbital recess. This is frontal supraorbital recess is behind here, and the anterior thymoidal artery is behind there, behind right. this recess. So, we need not to bother about that. The reason is, this is our area of interest, and that is the far lateral recess going up. See that? Right, sir. 
with some bad mucosa in it. See this bad mucosa? Only thing is, steroid solution should improve this. This is completely exteriorized. See this? Let me show you the close up of this mucosa again. See the so, mucosa. Right. So, what is at 9 o'clock position, this the structure which is compressing? This one. This one. This is the yeah. roof of the orbit. Yes. So, so, the roof of orbit. Okay. Yeah, that's the roof of orbit. See, if I press on the orbit, you will see. I showed you yesterday the roof of the orbit from above. Uh, let me compress the orbit. See that? Yes. Yes, sir. And this is above the orbit and laterally the frontal sinus which is extending beyond. That is the frontal sinus which is extending beyond and see the state of the mucosa. Hmm? Yeah, we'll pack a steroid pack. We'll put a steroid pack for even two, three days. These are the ideal candidates for that. See the mucosa. Right, sir, right. And see the mucosa in the sinus proper. See this? Right, right, sir, right. Thick mucosa. And this is your anterior limit with the skin coming. You cannot go beyond that. This is the, you know, limit of the sinus. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is entire sinus. That was the anterior wall we have completely drilled off from here. This is the lateral limit. Anterior limit you could see with the skin. And that's the only sinus. Imagine without exteriorizing this sinus, what medical treatment would help? What endoscopic sinus surgery would help for such a bad sinus? This requires such a big, big approach. Anatomically, this is the biggest approach could have been given to this. With limits laterally, anteriorly, posteriorly, and medially. See that? Right, sir. Is, yes, the, sir. is the bone osteotic, sir? Yeah, the bone is not osteotic, but not looking glistening normal like this. See this? Yeah. Uh, could so be this kind of mucosa ongoing on neosteogenesis, we could see a lot of bone erosions in the CT scan also in this side. Satish, can you find the orbit in its entirety, please? Pardon? Define the orbit completely. Orbit? Yeah. See, this is here below is the lamina papyracea. Medial wall. Orbit. And this is the superior wall of the orbit. See this superior wall. Right, sir. And above this is the lateral recess of the frontal sinus. See this? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. This is the maximum marsupialization that could have been done to this. Now, Hello. finally, we will seal the leak on the other side. Sir. Yes, please. Can we see the relation of the frontal sinus, the supraorbital? Relationship of the? The frontal sinus, the supraorbital recess, and the anterior artery. I have shown you earlier the frontal sinus and in this other side also I showed you. Frontal sinus is the anterior supraorbital recess is behind. See the see in this case, all the three things what you are asking. That is the frontal sinus above. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will show with the 70. Up there is the frontal sinus. <laughs> See, up there is the frontal sinus. Yes, sir. This is supraorbital recess. Yes, sir. This is anterior thermodal artery. Yes, Same sir. way you show it on the other side also. And see this classical side of the leak. Can you Hello? show the relation on the other side, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Give me a call later. I have to demucosalize a little bit around. See, either remove the mucosa or devitalize the mucosa. Both are same. 
for that hello yes sir for yes. your seal to be effective i had to denude the surrounding mucosa hello yes sir or devitalize right both are same what my coagulator is doing see this all around making it clear yes sir yes sir yes sir Sir, how many layers will you in in how many layers will you close this? Yes, well, just with the fat and fascia. Fat and fascia. Any glue or? Well, pardon? Any glue? Will you use any glue? Yeah, yeah, glue, glue, glue will use. Glue is important for the fibrosis. Right. Sir. See the bony margins all around. Yes, yes. Very clear. Yes, Very yes clear. sir. No problem. Devitalize. That's a simple principle of anywhere you leak the repair the leak. You have to clear the surroundings where my seal is going to come. See this? Yes. See my target is in front of me. Okay, give me seventy degree now. So I will use my fat press with the surgery cell to keep it in place. I will stiffen it with the surgery cell. A surgery cell is another agent which induces fibrosis. Now, better picture with the seventy degree. Fine. Yes. See the bony margin all around. Okay, sir. I want to. Which which is the donor site for this fat, sir? Hi. See the fat will keep the fat in such a way that it is pressed through the defect half in, half out. Self-sustaining dumbbell side. You are purposefully giving it a dumbbell shape, isn't it? Sir? Yeah. So the so the. See, I am pressing with the surgery cell on it. Okay. Okay. Could you see? Yes, sir. Surgery cell on it. See this. In such a way, half the fat is in, half is out. It's a sort of click you get. Yes, sir. Sir, hello. Yes, please. Sir, uh, which type of which kiros type is this type of plate? <laughs> I will show you on CT scan after this. See this, surgical. Yes, sir. See my surgical help 
to keep the flat fat pressed at the desired area would you notice that yes sir yes 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 and this surgical induces fibrosis sir any role of a bath plug technique bath plug can work in little bigger defects okay not for such see this what i am doing yes now i have got a feeling my fat is self sustaining Can you see now? No pulsations. Right. If yes, pulsations sir. are coming, that means it is not self-sustaining. Hello. Yes, sir. What are they? It is self-sustaining. Yes. practically sealed nothing is required to be done gel form is is gel form sir sir oh no just wanted to press with this see it is all done yes see no pulsation at all so do we need to use any local flaps or we going to put the fascia directly over this the fascia fascia it is a freshly fresh tear yes sir uh, it has a best chance of sealing faster see this fat yes yes sir push with the surgical cell that's it yes sir my leak is already stopped no the thing i wanted to see was there should be no pulsations you know pulsation is a problem the pulsations yes. are there that means still it is not self sustaining yes sir sir uh, is this fast glue or slow glue fast immediate see see the instant glue yes sir so would this be narrow i even don't feel like putting a fascia or anything over it yes sir so would this be narrowing the frontal recess uh, opening yeah that you have to ensure properly you have to ensure see my frontal recess there up now since you have asked in case if you feel like it may obliterate the opening of the advantage of the frontal recess suppose it to be i'll show you nahi lag raha hai the leak has been sealed can you see yes sir now just to answer your question and i am putting as well in case you have a doubt i am putting a tube a sort of temporary for 5 7 days acting as a stent in the frontal sinus see this yes sir okay i don't know aapko piche se pakadna hai sir do we need to get an anesthetic well salva done uh, just to uh, i know this seal is complete but just to be uh, doubly sure to get an anesthetic valsalva done after not closure required. not required is you know the... when anesthetic valsalva is required when you suspect a leak and you are not able to locate the leak so to check complete closure yeah so that is the pulsation 
you could see the free flowing csf before that didn't you didn't you see the free flowing csf before that yes and that is completely stopped not only that beyond that what i saw what i ensure was no pulsation pulsation is the key if the pulsations are there it means your seal is still not perfect see now what i put this to answer your query this is a frontal sinus this is a tube to keep the frontal sinus patent can you see yes sir see my seal is so nice with the surgi cell and the pet yes sir and now i am going to put some um, gel from here here so i don't need to remove anything from here some more glue now now i can put glue see this because the frontal my tube is protecting can you see yes sir without this tube i couldn't have put like this yes sir that is the beauty of that tube yes sir that i can thoroughly use my glue this glue is not only acting as a glue to hold something yes sir this is something which initiates the fibrosis healing yes. Yes, master sir. healing yes sir this tube will remove after 7 days and this will keep the drainage of the frontal sinus and yes, this is, see this is going to the maxillary sinus below yes sir so see, this will remain in place this will not go anywhere can you see yes sir this tube has enabled us to seal this area effectively otherwise i uh, i would not pour the glue like this i would not use the seal like this otherwise that will completely obliterate the frontal drainage see now yes sir beautiful for the card no chatish yes sir avada sen gupta acha is it difficult to remove the tube as you have put the glue there would it be difficult no, no. to remove the tube no no tube removal is how difficult it is just pull it and your frontal will open up you have put a glue over it so glue will uh, you know dissolve okay glue will not remain in place for long glue is not permanent thing okay okay so for next couple of days to seal this area effectively see this yes sir this is my non sticky layer yes sir so what i am doing all this is reinforcement yes my sir my csf is already stopped by fat only yes sir fat and is it a silastic sheet sir yeah yeah so csf is already stopped by the fat and yes sir uh, this thing surgi cell yes sir this is an exercise to keep everything in place for couple of days see this yes sir so now i will uh, fill it up with the covidon iodine yes sir so this will keep a smooth pressure over everything yes sir we want my fat and fat to remain in place for couple of days without disturbing that's it yes sir see this yes sir okay this entire process of you know healing should not affect the frontal drainage yes sir for which i have put a tube which is draining into the maxillary sinus as long as tube is there nothing is going to happen to the frontal yes sir the when to remove the drain merosel will remove after 3 days 3 to 4 days and drain after 7 days okay till then everything will mature yes sir and you will find a beautiful frontal sinus after that you remove the tube sir any need to fix the middle terminate to the septum exaction of soak gel from there pardon sir any uh, need for fixing the middle terminate stabilizing the middle terminate with the septum to prevent uh, lateralization in this case 
we have removed the part of the middle turbinate if you remember we have removed partially the middle turbinate in the beginning yes sir yes sir hey sir on the right side yeah right side only i am talking say the middle turbinate to the right side okay this that yes. is our frontal sinus area yes sir so wide open so i'll just leave a steroid soaked gel from there yes sir this is soaked in that sona yes sir what we want now are irrigation reaching there Yes, sir. We'll give, uh, we'll give him a oral sir. He had a poor lens. He has a complication. Give him an antibiotic and irrigation starting soon. That will take care of that. So, yes, please. Ah, uh, sir. One thing I want to ask, maybe not with you, but with the house. is there any replacement of backstar or legal means the prp which we prepare from the whole blood like if uh, we don't have backstar at that moment or yes. maybe the patient is very poor then can yes. we prepare that prp and how much effective that is yeah uh, i tell you we have done couple of times yes sir i would not suggest prp but prf yes sir prf is platelet rich fibrin yes sir and the simplest way to make prf in your ot only yes sir draw patients 10 ml of blood yes sir put in the centrifuge yes sir and centrifuge at a speed of 700 rpm for 8 minutes 700 rpm for 8 minutes yes sir it will make a fibrin clot prf platelet rich fibrin Yes, sir. The lower serum you can discard. Yes, sir. Rest is platelet is fibrin. It is a thick fibrin layer. Yes, sir. In between sir. the glass layer, you can squeeze it and make a good fascia graft like anything. Yes, sir. It's a layer. You can do tympanoplasty with that. Yes, sir. So PRF is a useful thing, and in case you don't have uh, glue or anything as an alternative, you can use PRF. Yes, sir. PRF is amazing. It contains, you know, uh, the growth factors of platelets. Yes, sir. So in this, additionally, there are uh, so many strategy to make so many things from blood. PRP yeah. is different. Hmm. PRF is different. Yes, sir. So, yes. So. There are many strategies. Can you bring the external camera? Yes. Yes. External camera, please. I'll show our centrifuge machine in the theater. Yes. And how we make various things out of it. Yes. Sir. PRP is amazing. That contains growth factors. Yes, sir. That contains platelet granules containing growth factors. Yes, sir. Pavila, functioning or non-functioning? Is कोई तो ला सकते क्या? नहीं functioning. इसमें से ताले पावी ना माइक्रो. ऑल्सो टू टाइप एडवांस पीआरएफ और ल्यूकोसाइट पीआरएफ ल्यूकोसाइट रिच पीआरएफ यस सर तो आई विल शो यू विद द एक्सटर्नल कैमरा यस सर एनपीपीसी हटा ना वो हटा दे और वो हटा दे पीछे गिर जाएगी ना इसको ये बहुत बहुत दोन या कैन यू कैन यू फोकस ओवर हियर एक्सटर्नल कैमरा वी आर नॉट गेटिंग एक्सटर्नल कैमरा पिक्चर वी आर नॉट गेटिंग एक्सटर्नल कैमरा पिक्चर यस Yes, sir. Right now we are getting. Yeah, uh, uh, this is our uh, PRF machine. Yes, sir. Yeah. PRP machine. This is centrifuge in the theater. We make very frequently. See this. Yes. These are the protocols we have uh, kept over there for advanced PRF. 
Yes, sir. Thirteen hundred RPM for eight minutes. Yes, sir. This is recently what we are doing. Means ten ml of blood. Keep for eight minutes in the centrifuge. Yes, sir. And set the RPM. This is the RPM set through which you can set the RPM. We draw करना. There is on the machine by means of which you can set the RPM. Yes, sir. And it will it will deflect here digitally. Yes, sir. Reflect here, huh? So for advanced PRF, which is the desired thing nowadays, is a thirteen hundred RPM for eight minutes. Yes, sir. Then the other we use uh, leukocyte PRF, leukocyte rich PRF. Yes, Then sir. We preserve the leukocytes. In that, see, in such like you want to use as a glue, you don't need leukocytes. Yes, sir. So, If you centrifuge the blood at a higher speed, thirteen hundred, it takes away the leukocytes also. Yes, sir. So in advanced PRF, only fibrin-rich platelets. Yes, sir. RF platelet-rich fibrin, nothing else. Serum you discard leukocytes melt away, and only advanced PRF is there, which can, you can use for glue for yes. healing purposes. Yes, sir. Diabetic wounds and all that. Yes, sir. On healing, deeper wounds, leukocyte rich PRF is more helpful. Then you have to centrifuge at a speed of seven hundred RPM for three minutes. Yes, sir. PRP is something amazing. It's purely growth factors. No yes. fibrin, no leukocyte, no erythrocyte, no serum. Yes, sir. Solely platelet rich yes, growth factors. So platelet-rich plasma. Yes, sir. Nothing else is PRP, and this is a complex process. And see the process. You can see you have to keep for seven minutes for centrifugation at thousand yes. RPM. Then hmm. wait for twenty minutes for the platelets to settle down. Mm -hmm. Whatever erythrocyte, the red area, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. is yes, discarded. Sir. Then whatever plasma and the Platelets which are settled down again kept for the centrifugation at three thousand RPM for ten minutes. Right. It takes away all the blood products except platelets. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. What did you do? Blood needed. All the blood products except platelets. Yes, sir. And then after three thousand RPM for ten minutes, remove whatever there above. Yes, sir. Only last one third. Containing pure platelets, rich in growth factors. Yes, sir. You can take out in the syringe and inject anywhere. Yes, sir. Like we use, like parotid fistulas. You yes. Know, no kneeling parotid fistula. We inject in the base PRF, PRP. Uh, yes, sir. And over the period of time, his non-healing wounds. Like you want anywhere you want better healing. Yes, sir. You can use that PRP. Yes. Sir, the advanced PRF for uh, thirteen hundred RPM for eight minutes. Then we uh, wait for uh, getting it settled down. Then we remove the uh, clot like something which yes, we put sir. over the PRF. Yes, you sir. Want, you go yes. on. I can show you once. Yes, sir. Please. You want It's to see? Hello, guys. Yes. बोला सिरिंज अनुपम निकाल दस एम एल ब्लड निकाल दस एम एल सो वी कैन शो यू एडवांस पी आर एफ यस इट इट गिव्स यू फेस या शीट लाइक अ थिंग You can yes. use in the mastoid cavities. Yes, sir. where there is bony defects, you know, it becomes a bone later on. Yes, sir. Once you have done a tympanoplasty, you can put over the graft. Yes, sir. Anywhere you are using, wanting some additional thing for the healing, you can use them. And since it is made from the body's own uh, material. Yes, sir. No, no extra thing, no cost. You need to have a centrifuge in the theater. That's it. Yes, sir. 
করে না বলে ওরা তার মাইক্রোস্কোপ আছে এন্ডোস্কোপ আছে সব আছে আমি আমার নিজেরটা দিয়ে কাজ করব স্যার এটা ভালো দেখে কাজ করতে दो लेके आना एक में दस एम एल पानी हेलो हेलो यस यू वॉन्ट टू सी दिस पानी भर ला हेलो यस इधर लिया उसको थोड़ा हेलो सी व्हाट आई एम रुक जाए एक सेकंड प्रभु ये इधर इधर लिया उसको इसको यहाँ से दिखा दो ना अच्छा चले मारी कांडा का ओके चलो रहने दो नहीं बाहर एक में एक में वो बाड़ी पूरे जेठे जाए चल अति ये तो कोड़े दे इसको वो बाल एक अगामन नाम कोड़े आज भी वो गाबरिया एक बहुत सब � Yes, sir. We are listening. There are two test tubes. Yes, sir. One is a plain water to balance the other test tube. Because yes. Sir. And then, just a little bit, yeah. Zoom, a little bit. Yeah. That is a plain water, and this is 10 ml blood. Yes, sir. Police are going to do this. Yes. We keep both the test tubes together. Yes, sir. Opposite to each other to balance. Yes, sir. Hold on. Hold on. Quick, quick. Yes, sir. Official job. Yes. Yes, sir. Now we'll start it and see the centrifuge settings. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Super kid. Yeah, I mean, what is our mom or our office? So, I mean, very poor. I put the chai. I mean, you can. I mean, the water cost me. The super soy corn. I mean, how much corn? अपन भी नहीं जाएं, ऑफिशियल जमा दी भी, टाइम मार भी थी, एक कॉपी से एक्टर, ऑफिशियल जब है एक्टर कॉपी की स्टैंड मेरे पास नहीं पड़ा, तू बोलो पता क्यों? थैंक यू। यार तू एक बार जान जान है बार, थैंक यू। इकतीस, यस what is the price of it? What is the price? Price of of what? Excuse me. This this machine. This machine is not costly. Price, please. Hmm. Sign time set, करना. फर्स्ट सेवन <laughs> तेरा
রাজস্থানে তো লঙ্কাই বিখ্যাত লঙ্কা বিখ্যাত আপনিও খাবো পনির নিয়ে এসছে বুঝলি সেন্ট্রিফিকেশন ইজ অন and when we remove after um, 8 minutes yes sir you will see the advanced prf yes sir this prf concept was innovated by a dentist in france yes sir long back yes sir and since then it has become so popular yes sir because of the growth factors from the own body yes sir the applications have expanded 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 everywhere yes sir. So wherever he, he used initially for the wound healing in the dental settings yes sir and it works so well yes sir. hair growth that is prp prp is injected in the you know scalp to stimulate the hair growth PRP is used for many places, you know, for many set, many situations. See now the setting is 1300. Yes, sir. We are waiting. We have to wait another six minutes. Yes, sir. And the thing will be ready. so in the otolaryngology setting also you can use it for many many indications yes sir wherever you want a better healing you can use it Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, I thought some question. Are you talking about it? Silly. Gloves. Forceps. Sir, will you elaborate the use of PRF and PRP in otolaryngology? Yes. In tympanoplasty, how can we use? I'll show you once I make this layer of PRF. This contains growth factor. Right. Once you finish your tympanoplasty, place your graft, you can place over it yeah. to stimulate the healing. Like when we do any nerve repair, we wrap the nerve in the PRF all around. Okay. So wherever you want the healing to be stimulated, yes, you use it. This is growth factors. Right. Yes, sir. Body's own growth factors, platelet is rich in growth factors. Yes, sir. So for sips. Yes, sir. You can use them. Three minutes left? Yes, sir. You saw Karabi? Gita, okay? Gita.
See what I'm removing. This is um, autoclaved glass slides. Yes, sir. To make the PRF. Yes, sir. These are two glass slides which will be used to compress it. Yes, sir. If you have somewhere raw areas left, you can use PRF. Even in the rhinology, yes, sir. I left then, I mean, this use this PRF after sealing the CSF leaks, like what we did. We yes. could have covered this entire area with a PRF. Yes, sir. After, for the raw areas, like after the, there are publications where people have used this PRF after the raw areas left after this uh, lothrops. Yes, sir. Wherever the raw areas left, wherever yes. you want stimulated healing, yes, sir. you can use this. Yes, sir. No yes. cost material, there is no yes. cost. Yes, sir. So, what is the difference between PRP and PRF? Huh? PRP and PRF. PRP is platelet rich plasma. Yes, sir. PRF is platelet rich fibrin. Yes, sir. See, in PRP, we rotate at 3000 RPM. Yes, sir. That takes away everything. Only platelet survive, rest are all, you know. Uh, gone. Yes, sir. At high speed. Yes, sir. Centrifugation, the leukocytes, erythrocytes, they do not survive. Yes, sir. Only platelets survive. That's why to get the PRP. Yes, sir. We have to do at a very high speed. Yes, sir. Hmm. Open. Sir, did you yeah. get the report of the frozen section biopsy of the last case? Yeah, 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 we got that. Uh, sorry, I forgot to tell you. Aspergillosis. Oh, during I was operating, uh, it was. Pure aspergillosis, he said he could see good non branching fungi. Thin. See now the machine is setting up. Yes, sir. Now we can remove. This is water. See now what is there? Yes, sir. This above is PRF, below is erythrocytes. Yes, sir. So now we want only PRF. Yes, sir. So I will bring this fibrin. This is a fibrin clot, basically. Yes, sir. I forcibly na do sir. Oh. Even thirteen thousand. Oh God! Pagya, वो तो ना पानी डालने को निकाल। Dust bin. वो लेके आया सुन? L L वो अपना मेनू दो मैच जा Oh God, this is melting fast. See, that is the clot. Yes, sir. Out of that, I am removing this erythrocytes. 
They are of yeah. no use. Gauch pieces. Gauch piece. Now what is left is fibrin, platelet rich fibrin. Yes, sir. And I will make a layer out of it. See this? Yes, sir. Like a fascia graft. Yes, sir. See this? See, it is a membrane. Yes, sir. Membrane like a fascia graft. You can see this. Yes, sir. Sir, in layered... Uh, no. You can make as big as... I lost some of it while I was removing. You can make a big membrane. You can place anywhere. You can draw more blood. You can make more. Yes, sir. See, this is my layer. Yes, sir. Sir, in CSF rhinoglia repair, this over can be used for graft tympanoplasty also. Yes. A proper membrane. Yes, sir. Sir, in CSF rhinoglia repair, where we can put it means over fascia or say where over. I, where I use the fat uh, with the surgery cell. The, yes. Sir. The, the area was sealed. This yes. could be used there covering the entire thing as a layer. Yes, mm -hmm. Sir, following cartilage tympanoplasty, if we put it on the cartilage, will it work? Yes. yes. So this is a pure membrane. You can use it like a fascia graft anywhere. Yes, sir. This contain fibrin. PRP doesn't contain fibrin. Yes, sir. We did at 1300. Yes, sir. The leukocytes do not survive that much of, you know, speed. Yes, sir. See this membrane? See yes, the membrane? Sir. Yes, sir. This is like fascia graft. Yes, sir. This is like fascia graft. You, I could have covered this, whatever we sealed CSF. Yes, sir. Uh, this is purely platelets and fibrin. Everybody, everybody, you can see the membrane. Yes. I hope it is very clear how you can make this. Yes, sir. Uh, what is the viability of this tissue till how long does it uh, last? We have to use within, uh, according to the literature, within half an hour. Achha. So, sir, we have a centrifuge. That's why we have a centrifuge in the theater. Yes, sir. Whenever we want, we start the process whenever we require. See the membrane? That's yes. a nice membrane and can be used as a graft yes, anywhere. Sir. If you have a bone defect, just put yes. like this over the bony defect. Yes, sir. It gets ossified. So this is very important in this glass, you know, block. Yes, sir. You can compress and make a membrane. Sir, so basically this is to increase the growth or to heal the tissue faster, but it is not give, giving much of any strength like fibrin glue, like Baxter. Like Baxter is also giving strength. Yes. Wo, everything is stuck to it. So this is not a sticking material. Yes, sir. This is for the healing. Even yes. glue has... You know, ability to potentiate the healing yes, by sir. means of initiating the fibroblastic reaction. Yes, sir. So we made two membranes out of it. One is this. Yes, sir. Other one is this. See this? I could make a big one also. 
So according to the need, you can take more blood and make like this. Okay. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anything more? Sir, आप इसका फोटो खींच लीजिए. So now it's uh, time to conclude the surgical session. Though we have lot many cases left, we are not demonstrating now. The so time for the lunch break for you, and then I am coming over there to discuss the post-operative care complications and then some question-answer session. Shatish, thank you very much for a beautiful reception. Thank you, sir. So I came all the way with my comorbidities to see your beautiful OT. Thank, thank you, sir. So kind of you. Yeah.